good afternoon everyone welcome to this complete basic to advance python program training under the mentorship of none other than the world record holder mr vimal daga there are few things which i would like to just put it across but before we proceed further let us know who our instructor is who our mentor is who our facilitator is you know because time is very valuable when we are spending so many hours with someone we really need to know who the person is let me give you a glimpse of who mr vimal daga is a man who is working on his vision of awakening the youth through a culture of right education a senior principal it consultant for all the top fortune 500 organizations a philanthropist a tedx speaker and a world record holder a man who works for the community to give them the right education in the right manner so that people can grow in their career people also know him as a king maker people also know him who has someone given life to so many people in this technological world thank you so much vimal daga sir for who you are and for serving the community in the way you are proceeding further we are blessed to have you as our mentor a person who has 20 plus years of experience into this industry is here to provide this training to the community with all his learnings in just this next upcoming 16 to 24 hours let me take you through the process of this program so that it becomes easier for all of us there are two platforms where this is going live it's a complete live instructor led training by vimal daga sir one is our learning portal which is learning. hash13.com which is our very own learning portal where the session is going on at the same time it is also available on youtube second and the first most important thing is like you all who have registered with us okay through using the right registration link would be a part of the whatsapp group why is that group so important why should i be a part of that whatsapp group let me take you through all the benefits of joining that whatsapp group first all the ones who have registered with us would be eligible for a training certificate an industry recognized training certificate after successful completion of this training the communication for this certificate will come in that whatsapp group only there will also be a project at the end of the program which will lead you to a project certificate hence it is a recommendation to attend the complete program live with vimal daga sir because he'll keep telling you what and how will you proceed further in this project again the communication for the project certificate the requirement what are you supposed to submit will come in that whatsapp group which i was talking about also the ones who are a part of the whatsapp group will soon be a part of an elite python community people with like minds people to contribute to this community people from varied industries having rich experience of 2 5 10 15 20 20 plus years also this young enthusiast engineers who are willing to do something great in this world willing to become creators and innovators in this world is what is a part of that elite python community that community would be accessible to you all for lifetime so the ones who are a part of the whatsapp group will soon be shared with a link okay wherein you can go and be a part and you get an access to this community okay again i'm repeating the community access is for lifetime so that in the near future if you have any python queries you're working on something or you have something to contribute to this community you can do the same okay last but not the least is like where do i ask my queries since it's a live session there are two places where you can ask your queries one when you go to a learning portal there is an option which we have open below which is for the comment you can ask your query there second is the youtube but currently youtube chat is disabled we will open it only at a specific time when you ask you for the q and a that's where you can ask your queries as well just a recommendation please pen down all your queries in a piece of a paper pack it aside and drop one message in the comment box so that all your queries till that time is addressed by my moderators by my volunteers there are ample of technical volunteers and moderators here in this journey with you all to walk along with you to make your journey a very smooth one thank you so much each of you know my moderator my technical volunteer my management team who is actually behind you know the curtain making this event or making this program as one of the biggest 
ever live python training from basic to advanced thank you so much blessed to have a team like you all only then these things are possible at such a grand level at the same time the complete training is going to be live practical okay implementation so it is recommended that go along with women daga sir during this training and don't think that oh it's youtube i'll do it later we never come back trust me think over how many sessions have you actually taken as recorded or kept kept on youtube and you went back and thought about it never we don't get time we don't prioritize things it's a it's a humble recommendation to go live with vimal daga sir okay please again just a small recommendation that the whatsapp group okay uh, will be that's where the place where we'll be helping you communicating all the things further be it the certificate project certificate community link all the benefits the technical volunteers to work along with you come to you in the whatsapp group by chance if you have not registered yet you just got the link from someone and you are attending this program we are glad you know because we are here to give you the program because it's absolutely free of cost we are here to give you the right education but if you want a certificate and if you want that whatever you are learning is documented somewhere then do register for this program if you don't have the registration link on the youtube channel check the description that's where our official link of registering is mentioned out there please register once you register you get an email that email has a whatsapp group link you can join that also we have a telegram group for all the further updates do join that for the official time that's it from my side uh i'm sure you all are excited the ones who have attended vimal daga sir sessions before know the level of content he goes with the kind of delivery he delivers the kind of real time examples you know practical use cases industry use cases industry relevant content the way he delivers i am excited i'm i'm sure you are also thank you so much over to mr vimal daga for taking this further the python programming basic to advanced under the mentorship of mr vimal daga thank you so much Hey guys, uh, welcome, welcome to this training, this program. All right, very, very much excited to have you here. Uh, such a uh, powerful crowd, I can say, the audience uh, in this live training. Uh, first of all, guys, uh, this training is free. You guys know nothing. Uh, you know, you guys know because at the time of registration on this program, right? But doesn't means it is like just like a webinar, or doesn't means it's like just like a uh, normal. Uh, very basic level of work uh, work <coughs> shop kind of thing right um, i can say uh, i can say uh, this training is curated in such a way that whichever domain or whichever technologies you guys belongs to right it give you a boost in your respective uh, path okay now it doesn't matter you're from iot from cloud computing from blockchain from mobile app development web app development you maybe you want to pursue a career in data science or maybe big data world or maybe in the quantum computing world right uh, this program is such a uh, this agenda i can say even though guys if you go through agenda it look like a very basic that we we start from data structure we start from variables <coughs> we start uh, we will go for for loop then while loop then function then object oriented programming then multi threading multi processing file handling ex exception handling uh, decorator generators so it look like is like a typical <coughs> training program but it is not like in this way right in this program i'll deliver the content in such a way whichever field you want to explore or whichever field you want to pursue a career on or you might maybe expertise or maybe a professional in some company or maybe you want to pursue a career in devops environment right so the program is created in such a way right it will 
enhance your experience in that particular area <clears throat> okay or it will enhance uh, your capability to integrate multiple components and solve the thing very quickly okay or maybe you guys might be uh, you know enhance your knowledge for your coding interview round for the company and uh, for joining some top company in the world and you're preparing for data structures and the algorithm so obviously this training is not about dsa right but i created this program in such a way <coughs> okay that if you want to solve any problems or any coding interview problems right then creating any algorithm and planning and creating any kind of customized data structure would be again a kick of peace for you okay so I had a lot of things to discuss right now before this I want to uh, tell you something a little bit about me I think Preeti already announced uh, about me I think most of the guys already done some some one another trainings under me but it is always good <coughs> okay to know more about the instructor to give you the confidence on the content uh, so I can say it's so simple to know about me my name is Vimal Daga if you can see my screen then uh, if you search my name in the Google Vimal Daga, you will find tons of information about me, which vision we are working on, which all the campaign we are running on, right? My TEDx speak, uh, the, the idea and the philosophy and the motto we guys are working in this world, right? Uh, because we guys are more uh, from the technological background, so LinkedIn may be a great source to know about me or your current instructor, I can say. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so if you go to my LinkedIn, uh, profile even though it's not so much up to date from last couple of months I can say but you can say get some idea what I'm doing which technological area I'm working on it has been said in the LinkedIn world okay I am the only one in this entire uh, not the country entire world who having the maximum global certificate right in almost all the technological area even though this list is not up to date but it's an unlimited list and I am the only one it has been said by again <coughs> these uh, technical professor who work in almost all the uh, possible technology that is exist or that will be the future from DevOps to Docker to Kubernetes to cloud to big data uh, to machine learning to IoT to blockchain to quantum computing I explore all the technology and somehow integrated those things uh, welcome Subham Rathod. Uh, so <coughs> integrate everything uh, uh, in some of the top companies. So work almost with all top four to 500 companies in my career and that's all. And if a programming perspective because this training is more about programming. So uh, almost 20 plus different programming languages have worked a lot. Not less just to learn. I work you know to solve a lot of real use cases and create a lot of different kind of uh, applications for the company maybe related to microservices maybe related to xyz from java to ruby to Perl to scala to python php c c plus plus and go and ton more different things right but this training is more about <coughs> python and i intentionally choose python as a uh, as a part of this program uh, there's a reason why i choose python that what i want to start this training uh, with all right so this is very basic information about me. I don't want to invest further time, right? Uh, but yeah, it might give the confidence in the content plus 19 plus 20 plus year I've been working in this particular industry, right? <clears throat> now what I feel, okay? If you just talk about the Python, Python is one programming language, is a one programming language. This is the official website, python.org is uh, the official site of the Python community. Okay, so what I feel guys, uh, I believe uh, according to my experience if you want to take some small counseling from me so from last 20 plus year working with all top companies in the world what I feel finally okay finally we as a IT guys or the technological guy or technical guy uh, right we have to work in one of the XYZ tools or the technologies <coughs> okay what I mean by this <coughs> either you have to solve something some problem for the corporate world right obviously maybe you have your own company or you want to plan your own startup whatever the case would be finally you have to solve one some problem right this problem may be 
you want to get some chat app or some social media website like Facebook or Insta or YouTube kind of website or Amazon kind of you know portal right something you have to create okay but whenever you create you have some idea okay things start from the idea and from the idea you have to pick XYZ tools or the technologies okay for example you might have to pick big data you might have to pick some kind of databases or no SQL databases like Cassandra or MongoDB or you have to, might pick in some of the idea IoT devices or you have to put use some of the networking devices or you have to use some kind of DevOps the mindset you have to use over here cloud maybe we have to use so technically based upon the idea and requirement you have to pick multiple tools on the technologies okay but the biggest challenge is if you want to interact in, interact with <coughs> any tool or you want to interact with any of the any of the uh, technologies all right so that for example i i want to do something with aws cloud or i want to perform something uh, in machine learning and the and the data uh, uh, deep learning <coughs> world right so uh, my, my computers my server gonna do this right we as a human being how can we ask these guys and how we can give this instruction that and say hey this is one IoT device please go there and ask them to buzz the to buzz the alarm <coughs> or to lead the lights or whatever you want to do or uh, capture the temperature of it of the current environment or how can I tell my computer that there is a one uh, program that will go and use the camera and the camera will detect the faces and then we will do something Right. or maybe you have some counter quantum computers from IBM so how we'll go and uh, 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 write some algorithm or the circuit over there depend guys whichever the domain you guys are in right so here the role of programming language come in play so we human being will always send the instructions to our computers to interact with XYZ tool or the technologies okay with the help of programming language okay finally you have to work on some idea okay let me <clears throat> let me come to my full screen finally you have to uh, deal and implement some of the ideas some of the feature for your corporate world or for your own company okay this is one thing okay and for this we should be great in great in multiple tools or technology plus how to integrate these guys maybe big data to cloud or maybe cloud with maybe IoT devices we should be great in this but but to connect these component together maybe in my project I would use cloud computing for example AWS I might, to, might, I might have to use quantum computers for example uh, right uh, uh, so to connect these pieces together or maybe I have to use some kind of DevOps tools or DevOps setup I have to implement in my company for automation and some other things okay then to connect these pieces together we need programming languages to to ask them for example to ask cloud computers for example cloud computing for example AWS cloud right even though they give a very simple way to click and do a thing uh, you know work done but it's, it won't work in the real world in the real world we have to uh, send the instructions from our laptop and say AWS I want to do something can you please set up one one operating system for me on the cloud just as, as a, example I'm talking about here so so sending the instruction we need a programming language so my point guys here is finally everything is done by technologies only but without programming language knowledge none of the technology guys you can fully work on you can fully you, you can't fully utilize their power you can't fully integrate the the component together and solve one big real use case of the real industry or the government or your personal startup maybe okay so in that context so i i suggest guys in this entire training is a full flesh training from basic to advanced there is no prerequisite there's a one great thing about this training there is no prerequisite i start what is programming language what is variables from where i'm going to start why i'm going to start from very basic because a lot of guys has a lot of myth in the programming world okay a lot of misconception in the programming world so i have a lot of secrets tips tricks to share with you a lot of myths to explain to you with some proof okay and say if you know this concept for example this is the wrong i'm saying i'm not saying i know everything but i have this proof i can show you practically this concept is wrong 
this is the right way to do it this is the right approach to use it okay and if you know the right approach then only you can solve something big because if the foundation is wrong on the top of the wrong foundation nothing can be built uh, properly that's what i i also believe on <clears throat> okay so i start from very zero then slowly 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 right uh, it like a up and down we'll go more deep into the core python internals then we go up and slowly we we uh, reach to the place where uh, everything that can be possible in the python world you guys be trained on i can say the simple word advance okay but i created this program in such a way i told you already in such a way that finally programming language you to use some expertise tools or with the technologies so whichever domain you belongs to or whichever technology you want to pursue a career on okay, there these skills will give you extra power it will you will be empowered to use that particular tools and technology in more better way so multiple things will guys achieve here complete knowledge of programming you will achieve here right this one thing plus the the delivery of the content would be Uh, in such a way that you 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 know you open your mind when I explain you maybe the variables also or the list also or data structures also in this training, uh, right? Just keep set one mindset in your mind. Just keep one mindset in your mind, or that's called context. That okay, hey, I I want to work in cloud, and I maybe I'm working in the DevOps world, uh, and uh, and here yeah, this concept I can use there. But well, this concept I can use a big data there. This concept I can use in machine learning, deep learning, somewhere over there. <clears throat> okay, and I can relate, guys, uh, because I am not only the Python trainer as such. I because I worked in all the technologies. That is a one great advantage I have, and you also have over here. So I can very quickly relate and tell you, okay, this is the what the area we have to use this particular concept. Okay, because otherwise, normally what I've seen, we just keep on learning language, 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 and finally. Uh, we are learning for loop we are learning if and else condition we are learning, learning variables classes object oriented and rest of things we are learning but technically uh, nobody is guiding us why we are learning this where we are going to use classes and where we are going to use file handling where we are going to use this kind of data structure and algorithms and xyz <clears throat> so i think i am very very clear what i'm what i want to uh, what i want to tell you guys over here okay so don't uh, uh, set your fixed mind that you are learning just python as a language or a programming language okay just keep your mind open in a way that it is not only just a programming language or just a python it will give me a tools or enabling the tool to enhance my power in my respective xyz future tools and technologies whichever i want to uh, pursue my career on or maybe my I'm, I'm existing in my area and good thing guys here is we have a <clears throat> huge audience across the world in this training i'm very i would like to welcome everyone students school students college students professors from multiple industries 10 year 15 year 20 year experience guys in this training i would like to welcome we have very fantastic powerful crowd Good thing is, even though this is streaming online YouTube, but even though we have, I think, one point seven or around is going to close be two k uh, live audience in this point in time. Otherwise, we had a huge number of registration. As per Preeti said today, when we start this program, we we highly recommend guys because don't treat this is the YouTube live streaming so we can refer it in the future. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to provide you a idea on a project. okay and after this training you will can create that project project this project can be uh, very much helpful in your uh, in your uh, some minor or major project kind of thing plus we also provide you one certificate extra certificate apart from training a project certificate uh, to you <coughs> okay that will help you in somewhere in a job and further career also but we give a deadline and so that to achieve that deadline if you learn Uh, live, you would be restricted and the constraint with the time that you have to learn it live, and thing like is live classes going on. <clears throat> okay, so that building the project, what I am the project I am going to show you and ask you not today because today we are going to start from very basic, but in the future classes, this project <clears throat> will help you uh, uh, to you know in in your career. I can say in the simple term. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> So let's start, guys. That's that's all very 
और भी इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट सो आई टोल्ड यू दिस ट्रेनिंग इज फ्रॉम वेरी बेसिक बट ऑलमोस्ट इन एवरी फिफ्टीन सेकेंड ओके यू विल सी सम वॉव मूवमेंट एंड यू सी ओके वॉट यू टॉकिंग अबाउट इवन दो आई एम ए ग्रेट प्रोग्रामर इन सी एंड सी प्लस प्लस इन जावा मे बी हाई हेड गुड नॉलेज इन पाइथन इवन दो आई हैव नो आइडिया अबाउट दिस कॉन्सेप्ट एंड आई हैव नेवर थिंक इन दिस वे वॉट यू आर टॉकिंग राइट नाउ ओके इन एवरी फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी मिनट्स इफ यू आर नॉट गेटिंग अ वाव मूवमेंट सो दिस ट्रेनिंग माइट नॉट बी बेनिफिशियल फॉर यू बट स्लोली स्लोली वी विल रीच टू द पॉइंट रीच टू द पॉइंट वेर वेर ऑलमोस्ट ऑल द एडवांस कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ द पैथन वेर बी कवर एंड वी गो वेरी डीप ऑल्सो इन सारे पैथन दैट्स वॉल दैट वॉट वी कीप ऑन आस्किंग दैट इज ट्रेनिंग इज नॉट जस्ट अ पैथन प्रोग्रामिंग ट्रेनिंग अवेलेबल इन द मार्केट दिस ट्रेनिंग वुड बी इंटरनल्स इंटरनल्स about python also okay whatever capability we have in the python we will discuss over here so that's all guys nothing i don't want to invest your time and to discuss more about i think i have very very much clear and this is what i want to set the entire context before we start this training so let me share my screen i think my screen uh, might be shared to everyone and what i'm going to do here <coughs> what i'm going to do here okay would be something like this uh the, i don't know guys have you done any training under me or not under my company name linux world or maybe hash 13 or maybe sometime i keep on delivering online live free trainings also almost every month or twice a month okay uh, so normally uh, my pattern of delivery would be something like this if i can explain you <coughs> with the graph okay i always start all the tools technology for example recently i deliver very very advanced expertise training quantum computings right uh, uh, quantum computer or, or maybe <coughs> sorry <coughs> maybe any other trainings also i always start from very zero i start from here to so keep in the mind that you guys have no idea in this particular tool or the language or the technology then slowly slowly i keep on setting a base context concept with some example use cases okay real world examples and slowly slowly you'll see in some time automatically without asking you you're going to reach to advance and similarly in the same, same topic you will see we start from very basics uh, normally i use say word zero and slowly slowly you will see you automatically reach to the advance and you will <coughs> look it it will look like a story some story language is going on and suddenly you reach to the climax of the story and you'll see oh wow i now i, I learned lot of thing advanced things also about this context why i'm saying this point to you because when i start every of you from very basics right so don't feel those who know python already or programming language already don't feel that i know this so let us skip this part because this will be a one story is going on and slowly slowly this story will connect you to some advanced concept so if you miss that story from very basic so it will be harder to connect the entire movie or entire story what is going on <clears throat> okay that's what i want to recommend from here the second thing is i am going to cover the python training in such a way that my motto is to also explain you the entire concept of programming language okay and explain you programming language concept in such a way for example object oriented programming is sometimes it look like very very complex concept sometimes for a lot of guys they feel okay but i explain you concept in such a way and then i implement this concept by python as a programming language but the concept i explain in such a way that that uh, if you want to use the same concept in java or c++ or maybe in scala and other language you can use the same concept only syntax will be different on the remaining languages otherwise the use idea and the use case <clears throat> or i can say the concept would be the same so also you can treat this training in uh, in the in such a way that i want to uh, you know conceptually understood uh, understand the the concepts of the programming language so this you can think this training in this way also otherwise for every concept i am going to use by obviously python as a programming language to explain you the concept and to implement the concept <clears throat> that's also guys one point i would like to tell you before i this i would like to start this python is training right i would like to tell you one more time because for me it is very critical point i don't know all right but you will feel sometime in sometimes very critical point okay we in the real world 
okay any were projects we guys work on okay programming uh, language of code i can say might take 5 or 15% of entire part of the project okay actually we have to work on idea actually we have to solve some problems you have to work on some kind of technologies but to to do something as automated okay for example i would like to connect to <clears throat> aws cloud i don't want to manually go and click there and do something there all right so i will tell my python program say python please can you go and do something on the aws cloud it is called automated okay for automation prospect you have to connect the pieces together or multiple component uh, right together for example if you talk about example facebook it look like for the client facebook is a one single website but technically internally almost every possible technology is working behind the same for machine learning to to cloud or to, to uh, xyz technology they using behind the same right but they connect the pieces together with the help of programming okay so here the guys there the role of programming come in play it doesn't means only programming will give you everything that is also one key point i would like to tell you guys see the guy lot of guys is keep on keep on keep on investing their huge time and money to learn programming 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 and they keep on practicing and practicing practicing it won't give you anything finally i've seen a real real issues in their career in the future okay learn programming at the core level and then try to use this skill of programming to integrate and to solve some real technological uh, issues and the problem and try to integrate with the technologies <clears throat> that's one thing so to to give you this summary what i'm talking about if you guys want to pursue your career in the cloud computing maybe one of the famous cloud computing in the market let's say aws cloud and you want uh, with my programming skills i can connect to aws cloud and say aws cloud plays automate something so there you can use python as a programming language so python is a great choice great choice as a programming language <clears throat> okay to integrate and to do some kind of automation in the cloud computing world okay for this especially aws cloud has created one very powerful program that you can use with python with aws called boto3 i'm just giving as a extra knowledge uh, just for extra knowledge nothing is special in 5 minute i am going to start python from very zero <clears throat> but i'm just giving a context just keep this in mind okay whenever you want to in the future that i have a python and i also know aws cloud computing how i connect this pieces together then you guys can uh, can remind you, you this screen maybe help you to remind that boto3 is one who connect the pieces together or maybe in simple term boto3 is a python library what is library also we will discuss in this training or maybe <clears throat> for example you want to work something on the quantum computers there's a future right or also the current world is also changing to the quantum computers then again we can help use python then they have a library called qiskit you can use qiskit library that will connect the python and the quantum computing together okay this is one thing now for example you guys may working on the iot and iot we have multiple devices more most you know is microcontrollers right one of the one of the useful microcontroller controller we have a node mcu those who from mcu from iot background they know about this controller may have much more controller and the micro processor we have then in the python we have one python part or component that is called library is called micro python we can use there to connect the pieces together okay so that this slide is also going to explain you okay why i choose python because python is such a language and now is such a that is called general purpose language okay means just while lear learning one programming language expertise in one programming language you can solve and connect to any of the technology and the tool that is the reason guys i am drawing this this screen to you to give extra knowledge so you will be very much confident why python why not other languages okay for example maybe you have a requirement to create a web development you want to you want to create the websites okay web app maybe then you can use python again they have a very powerful programs a library called flask or django right and many much more to uh, to uh, to do the things or maybe you want to perform and create a mobile development also right even though now python from the python we can do the uh, mobile apps also right then again we have multiple library for example i, I think one of the library is called kiwi you can use this kiwi to do things or maybe you are from the data science background machine learning or the deep learning i am doing little faster because this is just giving extra knowledge to you uh, so uh, so again in the machine learning and deep learning we have kara we have pytos we have a tensorflow tensorflow pytos tons tons of library available even though for the machine learning and deep learning world 
python is always the first choice <clears throat> to have here okay or maybe you belong to big data or spark world or hadoop world if you know about something like this that we have py spark or a lot of python related more libraries available to perform the thing <clears throat> to perform the thing but but i what i'm trying to tell you even though even though a uh, lot of now all the top companies in the world in the coding interview rounds in your <clears throat> in your computations right of uh, you know code interview coding uh, 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 interviews your competitive uh, competitive uh, programming world right so they will ask you to solve certain problems use some certain kind of data structure certain kind of algorithm or you to create an algorithm right even though they say you can go for python also <clears throat> to create this particular problem you can go for c++ or python so now they are giving both the choices mostly sometimes java and javascript also but python they give you so my point guys here is by looking at this diagram <clears throat> okay by looking let's say let me give the word dsa world and to make it a little bit simple okay so to think in this way you uh, yeah one one thing i forgot guys very very powerful thing devops world okay so if you belong to devops world and you want to do some kind of devops mindset you want to set or you want to you want to uh, uh, maybe uh, automate something in the devops one of the main part of the devops is to automate or automation i can say again almost all the main tool of the devops build on the top of python okay for example one of the very 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 famous tool in the market called ansible ansible is purely built on the top of python so if you have the good knowledge of python and if you think if you think ansible is one tool it is not doing something for you i want some extra capabilities so if you have the knowledge of python you can create more capabilities on it <clears throat> okay so you can think it this way so maybe guys this diagram will help you okay i think whichever guys field you are in almost if you go to security also guys almost all the security tools or hacking tools or uh, uh, you know defensive tool in the security world we got invest a huge time in my security in my life also right mostly they built on the top of python and mostly with the help of python we normally uh, create some extra uh, layer of security by by automating something <clears throat> okay so what i'm trying to tell you guys here is you finally we as a technical guy we have to pursue our career in one of the area okay but or maybe you have to use two products or two area for example maybe i want to pursue my career with cloud computing with devops whichever tools and technology you pick i worked in all all the tools and technologies in very very depth with almost all the top companies <clears throat> okay but whichever the tools and technology you pick okay python would be a general purpose programming language to connect these pieces together or uh, you can ask python python can you please go uh, to uh, quantum computers and can you please create one circuit for me to solve some problem right or python can you please go to flask or django and can and can you help me to create a website or web app <clears throat> okay so there's idea and that is the reason guys this program is known as python core internals from basic to advanced if you know uh, the this training the way i'm going to deliver all right it will give you or uh, enable you to work in any of the areas i am not saying this training is about quantum computing i am not saying this training is machine learning i am not saying this training is web development i am saying you that i enable your door to connect the python with xyz tools and technology which you guys want to work on but you have to work in one of the things that for sure <clears throat> okay that for sure or maybe database also but you better you to work and python is a one center part for this <clears throat> okay that is the reason if you see the official website of python python.org here they say you okay that these are the uh, some of the use area of the python web development gui scientific software development system admin even though this list is not full i given you the almost a kind of full list here which of the area and tools you can connect to python to solve the thing <clears throat> okay but this also they are talking about the same thing right now guys i'm not discussing the difference between python and java python and perl that is not so much required okay but in one single line i can say if you want to know the difference every programming language meant for something so it is very bad to differentiate okay hey this is java is not good python is good python is bad c++ is good everybody has their own use case okay 
and some use case C plus plus is good use there. Some use case Scala is good use there. Some use cases and some requirement PHP is good use PHP there. You'd Node there, right? So it is also something like this. But again, this training is not about the differences and part of this. But yeah, as we progress in this course, I can keep on relating you that and say, okay, if you want to do this, use C plus plus. You want to do this, go for Java. But here I'm going to explain the concept. Same concept you can apply there. But these are the areas where Python is the super, super powerful. <clears throat> okay. But I don't like to compare the things because everybody has their own powerful uh, ness. Or so they can, you can, you can <coughs> use intelligently uh, with intelligent um, uh, set of mind that, okay, if I know my requirement. This is the perfect tool to have. <clears throat> perfect language to have. So that's all guys. Let's start Python from very zero. Okay, so Python is a programming language. Okay, is a programming language. Idea very simple guys. Okay, in the real world, in the real world, we have, <coughs> we have lots of devices, maybe network devices, security devices, our laptops, our server, our IoT devices. Okay. So hundreds of devices we have, every devices will do something for you. You have CPU, RAM, hard disk, pen drive, mic, sound card, hundreds of devices we have, right? Every devices will do something for you, right? But on the top of the device and to operate these devices, okay, to operate these devices, on the top of these devices, we run our operating system so they can operate my system, system here that is devices. Let's say this system would be your physical laptop to make it simple. Okay, to operating system, we have the operating system devices. Okay, but we as a user, we as a user, I can see the human being, we as a user, if we want to, uh, to interact with one of the devices to do something. Okay, maybe I want to interact with my hard disk and say I hard disk, I want to put the data here so that I can put my data permanent. <clears throat> so we have to user have to send the instruction to the operating system and operating system is the one who go behind the scene and take the device and do the things what we are looking for. So we as a user guys, okay, can interact with this operating system. Okay. And the only way that is available for we as a human being or the user of the operating system is the softwares or simple term. I can use, I can use the word called programs or maybe I can say the app and the applications. Okay. There is no other way available for us as a user to interact with the operating system. For example, this is my, my, my operating system look very, very messy, but there is no way if you want to do something with the operating system as a human being, <clears throat> only way you have to use from program, maybe Chrome browser, notepad, mouse is one, one kind of program behind this and running. You have to open this page or this file. We have to use a program or the app without program, right? It is impossible to interact with your operating system if you have any any way just let me know but it is impossible <clears throat> okay now it all depend upon the program what capability they give you okay every program will give you different different capabilities and accordingly you can that part you can do with the uh, with your physical devices okay and this capability depend upon the idea on which idea this program has been created <clears throat> So what idea you have, according to this idea, we provide this idea to one of our technical team. They are known as developers. Okay. Developer, they, they use this idea and convert this idea into the program or the app or the software. I can say, <clears throat> or by sometimes also known as tools. Okay. And how they do it by writing the code or code is also like something known as by writing the instructions. Okay. And for writing the code instruction, they have to use one language so that your operating system can understand. Because we as a human being understand, let's say, language called English or if from, from India, Hindi. Okay, operating system will have their own language. They don't understand English or Hindi right now. Okay, so you have to use a language that everybody understands. Your operating system can also understand and you as a user also understand. We have to use some common language in between so that we can talk and they can understand what we are looking for. Okay. And that language is normally known as computers language and a lot of language available here, but right now we are interested on the language called Python as a language. 
okay so python is a language okay go for c plus plus java other language also available but we have to do but by this language we have to write the instructions i want to do this i want to contact to my hard disk i want to put the data i want to open the file i want to contact to my iot devices to 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 collect the 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 proximity here <clears throat> how much far we are somewhere so we can burst the alarm or whatever the case would be okay so we have to write the instruction i want to do this do this do this do this okay and those instruction are uh, sometimes also known as those code this entire code instruction become your program and this program guys you'd write in one file so we can run it again and again and again and this file is known as program file okay so very give, quick information i'm giving to you most of you guys know this but anybody who are very new in the programming world they, they know at least some of the terminology over here okay so the only takeaway from this slide is okay our slide is if you want to do something with your physical devices you have to interact with the operating system and to interact with the operating system you have to create a program in some language and in the program you have to write the instruction that is also known as code <clears throat> okay and that language would be your programming language in our case if we choose for some reason some of the reason i told you this is the big reason why i choose python is the programming language of our choice right now <clears throat> that's all okay this is one thing one more time time i want to explain you before we start writing some code in the python okay whenever guys you have some idea you want to do something and that idea means you have some use and you have to implement that that use that's known also known as use case so whatever use case you have what a use case you have okay it is also thing you can think is like a one idea you have in your mind you program it means you write a code and this code you put in one file and this file is known as your program file i told you already program file but when you execute this program file when you run this program file means you are you are asking this program file now go to your operating system and say i want this to perform can you please do it for me okay that is called execution so when you execute this program okay finally this program have to first load on one more device on the top of your hardware this is called laptop let's say and this device is called <coughs> main memory this is called ram you program first load on the ram somewhere here ram is a one physical device for example in my case let's say uh, your laptop you have 4gb for 16gb ram let's say my laptop let's say 16gb ram i have your device okay so the program will load here and the ram that takes some space from the from the uh, ram let's say this is called space from the ram when the program load on the ram this program is normally known as process process okay so the entire code will load on the ram it become a process and then cpu is a one device that you guys know i believe is a one device who will take okay load this program one by one it means you have the instruction instruction number 1 instruction number 2 instruction number 3 1 2 3 so cpu will take first instruction from this process and say oh, what do you want to do i i will take this instruction and they'll perform for you they will take next instruction they will take next instruction right and they keep on doing all the instruction whatever written in the process and whatever written by uh, you okay by by explaining you in this way slowly slowly okay when we reach to a topic called multi threading or multi processing <clears throat> okay this diagram makes more sense this diagram is telling you one small thing right now here is the cpu can only handle one instruction at one point in time or one statement of your code at one point in time till the time this at statement completely done cpu won't take the next one just keep take this point in right now at this point why and what is the issue we will face by this uh, we will discuss and how to solve this issue we will also discuss in the future but this is a very common typical behavior of this this i want to tell you okay so this is some small information i want to give you before we start python as a programming language so let's start python as a programming language so guys in any of the programming language first thing that we can start with okay i start with is a one concept called variables and the data type is not data structure data structure different thing i will explain what is data structure in the time in some time but data types and the variable <clears throat> but before i do so at least you understand one thing python is a programming language 
all right and if you want to use the programming language you have to install this programming language in your respective operating system okay so python support in a mobile phone so if you go to mobile app uh, like say in, in iphone or when you uh, in your <coughs> android size 4 uh, do you have any python app available so you might find q python is one app so you can install the python programming language directly on your mobile phone and you start typing like in the code and run the code directly <coughs> over there that can also be possible okay but right now we are going to run our python code on mac or linux and windows in my case i have the windows so python software is available for almost all the operating system in the world all right so you just go and download the python code for windows and install it so anybody who is there already the past has 13 community right we have already shared the the let's go learning dot has has 13.com we already shared the uh, video how to install the python okay so you, i think as you have gone through this video in this portal for learning portal and have you guys already installed the python in your laptop by chance if you miss let me tell you very quickly okay just one click step nothing very technical so if you want to install the python there's a multiple way available in the market to install and to get the python one of my right now recommended way for right now or let's also help you in the future also is a way called anaconda so anaconda is one kind of community you can think of they are maintaining python and especially they are maintaining lots of libraries of the python okay python so in the future if you want to work on any of the tech tools and the technologies anaconda will very quickly give these libraries to you okay so what are libraries we will discuss in some time okay but so anaconda is a great choice <coughs> to to get the python so what you can do you can go to <coughs> to uh, google and search for anaconda python download <coughs> okay this is the website you will see in the website this might be the link uh, this is the first link of this one and here you will download python okay or you may install python with the help of software call or the python distributor call because a multiple way way python has been distributed in the market okay i recommend right now okay to get the python from this distributor called anaconda click here and download it based upon your operating system <clears throat> just one thing keep in mind okay whichever way you are installing the python i'm using recommending anaconda but whichever way you are installing python install python 3.9 version at least because there is a lot of capability <clears throat> Okay, that I'm going to demonstrate in this training, it was available in 3.8 version. Okay, so there's some interesting new capabilities Python has come up with, very interesting, very much useful in solving some real use cases very quickly, is available 3.9 or 3.10 also. 3.10 is also available in the market. Okay, so at least download 3.9. If you don't have 3.9, update yourself. Right now, most of the things will work, but some of the things I'll show you maybe today in my next classes won't work on 3.8 and below so that is the reason one thing so i think you download python from here or you can download the python from this main website from here here also guys they're giving a 3.10 version okay <clears throat> so that can be useful so either 3.9 or 3.10 you install otherwise some of the things you won't able to work <clears throat> okay so just click here download here size maybe five some five six hundred mb size click 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 next and install even the video guys we have already shared in your learning portal and we are again share to everyone in the open market also and youtube channel also just follow this instruction of installing and then install it i don't want to invest that time here <clears throat> but in my case python is already installed with the help of anaconda so if i want to use the python i will open i search in my windows i will open my command prompt with cmd okay and from here there's a black screen or terminal come up on my window same thing you open with mac and terminal or linux okay then you can run python and see with the current version with capital v here and in my case the version of python is 3.9 it is about 3.8 so that is what i wanted <clears throat> so technically python i already have in my laptop that's what i would like to tell you here right <clears throat> now let's start with the python okay how to write the python code where we write the python code if the, you have these questions we'll discuss some time but let's start <coughs> the python from very basic so python is a programming language you guys know nothing nothing very technical but any programming language okay first thing uh, you should know about the keywords 
keyword because it's a language right right now i'm i'm talking in a language called english right so i know language english that is i can communicate with you for example i say hello how are you so how are you is one keyword i say please write it down so write it down is one keyword to which i can tell you the instruction do something <clears throat> so keyword is a one kind of vocabulary of the python through which we can ask the python to do something do some action like a verb okay so there multiple keyword available in the python as as we progress in the course i can keep on telling you the keyword that is available in the python what but one of the very simple keyword is called print you know it is something like this if i say <clears throat> hey guys write it down similarly i can say print python print something so print will python will print something for you so print is one keyword you can think in the python but how can you connect to the python so this is a very simple in a command prompt type the python and they say welcome python has come from anaconda it come from any source doesn't matter but a python is we have right now it's a python uh, is being connected what is interpreter we will discuss but the python is a interpreter they give the interpreter to you we can also compile how we will see in the future classes but what is interpreter and compiler those who don't know doesn't matter we will discuss in the future class okay but this is the python interpreter this symbol means python is behind the scene who is listening to you who take the instruction from us we are the human being and from from us they take the instruction and will they will take contact to operating system and they will perform for example i am saying python do small one thing i'm i'm asking you how uh, are you okay so when i hit enter python say uh, i don't know what language you talking about you might know english but i don't know which language this is so for me it is a uh, i don't understand because uh, whenever language doesn't understand anything there is called invalid syntax there is error <clears throat> but if you want to say python because you doesn't know english as a language but you know your language and your lang in your language print is a one keyword or one one kind of action so i want to say something with a print let's say hello now they can understand so now python say i know i understand what you're talking about print i will print the thing for you so very simple thing not nothing technical again i'm just giving this information for very basic those who are again very new in, in the, any programming lab world so if you want to print something on your black screen okay then you can use print but again it is your choice where you want to print something you want to print on your black terminal okay or you want to print something on the pop up on the screen or you want to print in your printer as a hard copy or you want to print in your whatsapp as a message means send the desk on the whatsapp or you want to print as a email okay for everything we have a different different keyword and keyword guys is also known as function behind the scene what a function will discuss why i am saying keyword is function that's also we'll discuss in the future classes or maybe today also some time point okay so everything is a function what is function we'll discuss and for everything for doing whatsapp or email and printing pop up terminal we have different different keyword or the functions available okay so guys maybe today i'll show you how we can use python and python will send the print or message to whatsapp okay or maybe i can ask python can you please send a message or print the message to my speaker means my speaker will speak the message so some of the demos i'll show you today how we can do with the python right now just strict with the terminal so point is if you want to print any message on the top of a screen then you need to use some keyword that is sometime or not sometime is actually internally is a kind of function only okay so uh that is a print print is only doing this thing for you but you can't use print to send the whatsapp message you can't use print to send the output to your speaker by so you today how we can do it <coughs> okay so and how the print work print then the curly braces so you know curly uh, parenthesis and between this you type what you want to print very straightforward thing. now come this is uh, right now this information is enough to start my next topic or the main topic that is called variables <coughs> variables so what is variables what is variables is very simple that those who by chance doesn't know okay for example i have some data called 5 we can actually use tip pipe print the 5 also here they will print for you i have the data of 10 but what i want to do i want to keep this data somewhere okay keep there somewhere it is something like this i want to have my own box or bottle for example you can think it is like a water bottle Okay, or I can say just a bottle, and in the bottle I can fill some water, I can fill the cold drink, I can fill some drink, I can fill some solid item or some gases item. 
okay so in the bottle what i want to fill you can fill this bottle with so this is the bottle like a container jar or in this bottle whatever you fill is some kind of things so technically in the programming world these things are known as data and this bottle or the area where you fill this data is called variables okay but in this bottle what type of data you fill what thing you fill one more guys so in this bottle what thing you fill for example you fill uh, maybe cold drink or the water or the milk so they are called liquid or gases or solid <clears throat> Okay, so we have different different kind of things available, right? Similarly, we have different different kind of data types available. What kind of data types you fill? Let's go data types. Okay, so for example, okay, if you want to create a bottle, it's something like this bottle. That's all. Equals to in this bottle, what you want to fill? Which data type you fill? So here, the data type may be where the data type. Okay, data types. Data may be numbers. Okay, so I want to fill number let's say five. So in this bottle, five is stored. In this case, bottle is a variable and five is the data. And this data has a type called number. Okay, okay. So in this bottle <coughs> or in this variable, five has been stored. It has been stored in this bottle. Now in the future, if you want to go inside this bottle and see and look what data we have in this bottle, here also we can use print. As a print, can you do one thing? Okay, go inside this bottle and tell me what you have. Pick this data and please show me in the screen. So print will go, will show on the screen. This is the data we have right now. <coughs> Five. That's all. Okay, but in this bottle, you want to fill some other values. Other values. Let's say I want to fill um, uh, my name. We can fill it. Okay, but in this case, guys, when I try to fill. Okay. Uh, they will give a error why because guys in any of the programming language okay if you want to store somewhere a data that's look like a string or normal english word or maybe hindi word or chinese word they are the strings and you have to tell these are the string okay then you have to very specify that this is a string and for telling this string you can use single code or the double code in most of the programming language single code and double code have different different meaning in python either you can use single code or either you can use the double code that has the same meaning <clears throat> okay so when you use anything double code single code it means they are the string now they are very clear the data is a string is a what kind of word we have okay because if you don't use anything between the double code single code they treat they are one kind of bottle they are they are one kind of variable but you don't have any variable vimal so that is when they say vimal is not defined they give the error i don't know about this name or this variable <clears throat> but technically in, now in my bottle now we have vimal store vimal has been stored in this bottle very very simple thing nothing very technical but just wanted to tell you very quickly okay so now in this bottle we replace this value where we fill the new data this called kind of string called vimal okay now one interesting thing if you guys work on any programming language okay like especially c c++ or java and, and these kind of programming language okay whenever you create a variables let's say our variable is called x okay in this variable whatever data you would like to fill okay you have to fill before you fill the data you have to tell x in the future we will fill some kind of data on you so i am going to define your data type It means i am going to tell what kind of border it is for example if i only take the border and say this is a bottle so it's like a any kind of data you fill but it's a no this is the liquid bottle or this is only the solid bottle so you specify it fix right that that is constraint you fix it constraint means you fix it that that the the only type that you can fill is only solid or liquid similarly in most of the programming language right we have to do it is compulsory to first tell what kind of border it is what kind of data type you have to fill it is something like this you say in this bottle i you have to only fill the string the bottle name let's say is x and then in the future you have to fill let's say vimal you can fill it but in this case if you fill 5 it will give the error because 5 is a number and number you can fill in the bottle let's say bottle is called variable uh, that has the data type called string <clears throat> but in python we don't require this the same bottle 
I can fill the number and same model I can fill the string okay why why because Python will do behind the scenes something for you what they do and how they do we have a detailed discussion on this but let me give you very simple uh, term here for this okay what Python is doing initially when I create a variable called X let's say let me create a variable called X instead of bottle if I fill 5 okay so I'm not saying Python doesn't know what is 5 they know 5 is a number so Python say you don't have to define you are a programmer be relaxed just focus on your idea focus on your <clears throat> focus on your uh, what I say uh, your uh, uh, focus on your you know uh, process or approach or algorithm what algorithm we again will discuss in some time okay uh, an idea and just focus on your programming code rather than just focus more on writing right right data type and wrong data type so if you write wrong something will fail in the future so uh, we, we as a python make this programming language so simple for you okay so simple for you so that you will focus on your code maybe if i make this program code very much uh, strongly typed means means this is a concept of strongly typed means you have to tell your data type before you create the variable or before you put any data then you are sometimes your code become complex but this part i will do for you automatically so it doesn't mean python i'm a python i don't understand data type. i do understand data type okay but i will find for you automatically somehow how we will discuss in the future classes so I know the data type of this X is number. When you change this, let's say to Vimal, I know the data type of this X is now become, become a string. And when you fill the number first, I know it's integer or I, is a number. When it changes, I, I know you want to change. So I will automate change for you. Okay, this is what type casting and type conversion. So type casting and type conversion, we will do for you automatically. You don't have to worry about it. In other language, we have some extra code for this, extra function for with this, for doing type conversion, time is data type or data type custom. I will do automatic for you. We, even though we have a certain way, sometimes we have to use it, but some of the cases, most of the cases I will do automatic for you. Okay, so if you want to check who X, what data you have, we can print it. Remember, but what is the data type of this X? So we have type function available here in the Python in the python through which we can find the data type of this x is string but when i fill six now what do you have can you print okay six what data type you have in this x so this is, is a number but guys again in the in the real world we have a different different kind of numbers available okay so which kind of number it is it is a number is a kind of whole number from minus negative to plus negative you know one two three minus one minus two so it's called integer integer means like a whole number or you have a decimal number that's called float you know 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 or you have some kind of complex number you know, imaginary part sometime sometimes using physics and mathematics and linear equations and linear algebra for something right so multiple number the support so here they say this is the integer but in the x if you say 6.7 6.7 be stored okay and uh, now we find that it is a float kind of thing similarly we can store complex number also how we'll see in the future sometime a use case will come up i'll show you okay so they know it they, they know what kind of data type you have stored but they will find automatically for you and this concept of finding automatically for you and automatically change for you change means right now in x we have float but if i store true here okay true is a boolean you know where on and off zero and one true now it's become boolean so they automatically change type cast for you this concept is called type in inference not interference type inference so they will do automatically for you you don't have to worry about this called type type in inference so there's a good capability of the python so what will change the type for you sometimes we don't want this so how can we restrict sometimes we have to change ourselves how we do that we'll, we'll discuss in the future but right now they're doing most of cases this is helpful okay so we can quickly write our remaining code rather than focusing more on uh, next plan okay what kind of data we want to fill <coughs> in the future okay so there's one uh, capability python has okay 
but yeah to go for typical language c c plus plus there java mostly they don't have in in some of the newer version they are coming with some of these kind of capabilities but typically they don't have that's what i i can see here <clears throat> okay this is one point one more small point here is okay if you talk about boolean so if you want to say false means no or of then false we can write here where guys f and t is in a capital letter is a fucks is a is a is a is a predefined name you write in this way then only they understand is a boolean true or false do or not do okay or not okay something like this okay but if you type true in a small t they say i don't know what is true true i don't only understand tv capital so you just keep this small thing in mind and one more small thing guys okay anything that you put in the double quote or the single quote that become string okay it become string so even though if you put the number also between double quotes it become a string <clears throat> it become the string so just keep this also a very small thing in, in the uh, mind so in simple term if you talk about the data types data types so we have a number as a data type we have a string as a data type but how to recognize a string anything that we put in double quote or the symbol uh, single quote in python both the things have same meaning and same use then it is known as a, tree, a string anything you put they become a string okay so we have number as a data type string as a data type and boolean as the data type list array these are not the data type they are the data structures what a data structure will discuss in some minute but these are typical data types uh, we have what kind of data you want to store okay these are the very typical one or i can say these are the very primitive one it is available by default by your code Uh, by your programming language very primitive again we might discuss in some time <clears throat> okay so this is one thing one interesting thing guys i want to tell you even though this concept you guys might know already but this concept <clears throat> i don't think so okay normally nobody think okay for example let's say x is a variable okay equals to 5 is a data everybody might know this from your older skills knowledge that whenever you run this code in any of the programming language this code will run on the top of the ram top of the ram okay it means inside the ram they will get some space or in this space we will store 5 and we give this space a name called x okay this is what guys everybody know and when we close the program close the entire program we will write this line this line and guys this lines are known as instructions or the statements <clears throat> these are statement 1 statement 2 or instruction 1 instruction 2 and this entire part is called code you can you can use the word here okay so uh, uh, so this you guys everybody know <clears throat> when you when you close the program then this space will remove from the ram okay but i can give the guarantee based on guys my till the skills <clears> or <throat> the knowledge i can give the guarantee that nobody has asked this question to you and nobody also proved you this point the point is okay we say google document say wikipedia say books to your teacher say this data load on the ram but nobody proved you or maybe i don't know guys have you asked this point of to your teachers or not okay have you ever asked from to your teacher can you please prove this okay i don't believe on this i can i obey you <clears throat> uh, right but i need a proof for this how i know this data is load on the ram <clears throat> or the top of the main memory okay there might be chances this data may be there in the hard disk the data may be on the somewhere area of the cpu they have the also some registry registry storage for it okay and this data may be my other storage also okay how can we prove that x equal to 5 store on the top of the ram and how can we prove when my program terminated or close this data will remove even though most of guys will prove this how how they will exit this program till that we have x equals to 10 then they exit this program program close program terminated again they start and then they again try to print the value x it it is showing nothing so it look like they removed but again this is not the right proof okay maybe this program is not able to know and find out this data somewhere on the ram 
but the data might be exist okay so my guys my, my, my simple ask from you is okay that i don't know have you asked this point or not or have you this point this come in your mind or not but i uh, i'm giving this question to your mind okay and i'm also giving you some time go to google and try to find out the solution for this okay the the question is okay if your program has been uh, run your data is load on the ram data is there on the ram and when you terminate the program data will goes or it will still there we don't know only the right one who can give this answer to me is the real visibility of the ram when you see the entire ram for example in my case if i open my current uh, terminal or my task manager of windows in my case my total ram is 16 gb and 7.1 gb is full okay so when you get a chance and opportunity to see this entire 7 gb ram then you can go inside and look at the ram that x5 is there or not if it's there it means my teacher my books is saying right if i close the program if the data goes from the ram it means whatever has been taught to us is right but if it's there even the program terminated it means somebody has given me the wrong knowledge and i told you based on the wrong knowledge nothing new can be built okay so the right way and the best way to learn anything is with the proof and the right proof is always to see the real what is happening behind the scene <clears throat> so do i know the answer yes i know the answer okay the question guys here is how to read the ram entire RAM. if you can do so lots of powerful concept of programming language you can just learn very quickly with hundreds of proof because hundreds of content and concept is giving very very wrong and myth in the market even though we just started from very zero level or negative level i can say in this program but i just keep on proving you lots of things been made but <clears throat> i have proof in some other way and with uh, while showing the ram also hey this is what the real is what i say in the books believe on things what is real don't believe on me also that's what i would like to tell you here is <clears throat> so i'm giving this i'm asking this question to everyone how can we read the ram if you can do so how to read the ram if you can do so lots of powerful things we can do and guys believe me this will be the one of the best tool you have in your in your battle field you know why because if you belong to security if you belong to performance tuning if you belong to data dsa level of uh, guys all right then we, some of the things is let's say some bug come up in the code or maybe some kind of security issue come up and to do the root level uh, cause analysis more be more maybe must, some of the tool might not give the answer to you but if you know how to read the ram you can go to the ram level and see uh, you actually you how much space you're consuming what actually data is there what what <clears throat> what kind of information is there that is leaking the things okay what is overflowing what is why we having a buffer overflow tons of things we can see it but just for a very simple example gmail say facebook say when we log in facebook gmail password is logged and password will be sent encrypted but when you guys see the ram you see not the fact it is not the fact the fact is when you type something from a keyboard keyboard first data will load on the ram and that point in time data is clear text so anybody who have the access of your ram by some networking way they can read the ram and they can break the password like anything right or bank or your gmail or facebook okay so it means for the security guys the one vulnerability they have to do something on this vulnerability okay it is it still exist <clears throat> it still exist the only thing that you have to do is how to read the ram even though i don't want you to invest your further time i recently launched my video even though if you want i'll share you know learning portal also okay where i explain you step by step it's like 20 minutes half an hour video that explain you how to read the entire ram and one of the example of you know uh, gmail password and something like this for a proof basis i show there to give you that knowing and reading the ram is so so powerful okay and guys, that is the reason i'm saying this training don't think as a as a just a programming thing i'm just giving you a lot of ideas lot of questions to your mind because if you know the question and finding the answer is not a big deal right but asking the right questions and asking the questions relevant questions is very very critical to come up with the new things that is the one thing i believe more <clears throat> okay so let's you know pose this point here
take this as a, as a task or go to my video and practice this thing and now in the future any topic come up just keep on reading the ram and try to see what is actually happening behind the scene <clears throat> okay so this uh, this is one thing let's uh, uh, start with the next part right so right now guys in the python we are working in this kind of um, screen this is called guys interpreter or it is actually known as live interpreter means whatever thing you type okay it would be there till the time this interpreter or live interpreter exists but as soon as you close entire code will be removed gone okay it means now x is not there means you have to type the entire code again okay so that is isn't this this live interpreter is good for initial learning and sometime i'll keep on using this live interpreter when any code fail i will use this to debug and find out the issue okay because if i'm doing something creating some code i want i want to keep my code with me with me so for this instead we do work on this live interpreter we will open a file and the file will write the code because we've typed something in the file it is always be permanent okay so now onward guys i keep on writing my remaining code on inside the file okay for this what i'm going to do i'll go inside my document folder i'm creating one new folder called python uh, training 2022 okay this is folder i'm creating here and in this folder guys i'm going inside this folder you can think this folder is like a workspace workspace means where we keep on putting our entire code so all the code from now onwards till the last classes i will keep in this folder and this folder we keep on sharing in a google drive and this link will share to you so entire code will be there with you as a copy from our side and plus all the screen what i'm drawing right now here it also guys will share in your google drive put in the google drive and this link will i will we will share with you so you can use this as a future reference so now this folder is empty you can dare command this folder is empty and i'm opening the notepad notepad uh, right and let me create one file for basic.py you can give any extension but because this is a python file so good practice to give py as extension don't give any space here otherwise windows will automate add txt in the last so don't give any space here right now <clears throat> okay so the very simple file open and now onwards i will keep on typing the code here directly okay the only thing difference would be this is not the live interpreter is like offline programming means when i type the code nothing is happening here for example i type 5 nothing happening if i type 5 plus 6 nothing happening but if i type on the live interpreter they will directly uh, give me the output so because this is a live interpreter as you type enter they give the output that is the that is reason they they are known as live or or sometimes known as interactive <coughs> interactive interpreters okay but i am not going to do from here we type the code over here okay I save it now how to run this code because now this file is called statement 1 statement 2 instructions 2 two instructions we have and now i close this file so this file is known as program file so one program file we have and now we can share this program file to other team members we can share to my clients they can run it or we can also run this program file how by giving the file name and they give the output we can keep on running this file name files as much as you want so having the code in the file is always a, a great practice to do and i keep on writing the code in the file right now guys i'm not using any ide so those guys may be asking which ide we can use you can use any of the ide or the text editor whichever you guys are comfortable on what is ide and text ed uh, um, editor we will discuss but you can you go for eclipse uh, <clears throat> you can go for pycharm you can go for spider you can go for uh, visual studio code notepad plus plus sublime atom whatever you know which you're comfortable on you can do it and if you are new i highly recommend start from here okay but slowly, slowly we go for some extra id because this kind of simple notepad will give you more clarity in the code so we can focus more on the code rather than here and there things okay it's because we are, just, we are just learning okay so we will start from here but yeah we will move to some other id or the <coughs> text editor in the future okay so this is what guys the basic code is now let's move to the next <coughs> part of it okay now um uh, one uh, thing i want to um, tell here even though let's let me uh, uh, talk more about it <clears throat> for example let's say i have one variable called x 
okay and in this variable let's say i store one data or one string called vimal okay so this vimal has been stored here let me do this practical directly on the live interpreter so that i can quickly type and give the output and show the output to you okay vimal enter guys the one more good thing about the live interpreter is this symbol is known as REPL. So this is the name of the symbol. The symbol is known as REPL, R-E-P-L. And the P stands for print. L for loop. E for execution. Or maybe sometimes known as evolution. Right? And R for read. What P stand here? P means if you don't, if you write print, or if you don't write print, I will work for you. Only in this live interpreter. You don't have to type print again and again. Okay, that's a, guys, one of the extra benefit you will have in this REPL or this kind of prompt of the live interpreter. <clears throat> so guys, I keep on writing print, but it won't work in your offline. Offline, write your main code always, otherwise they won't do. <clears throat> okay, one small thing. Now, uh, <clears throat> point here is, now in this variable, if I want to add one more name, one more name, so it is something like this. If I want to get the entire list of my today's audience, okay, and this audience would be my the entire database I want to maintain, and I want to get the name Vimal, then whatever the next would be, let's say uh, Rahul. So I want to collect my entire name of the audience and the participant, right? And I want to store this name in some jar in some variable. Okay, so we can do something like this. We have Vimal, then Abhi come up. But what you will see, guys, as you write Abhi, Vimal will overwrite. Will overwrite. Okay, only Abhi will <coughs> come. So point here is, if you have this kind of requirement, what I want to do, okay, I want to organize. Okay, I want to organize my data. If you have one single data, Okay, the guys, if you have one single data, there's no meaning of organized, right? <clears throat> organized means when you have same, similar category of data a lot. First name, second name, third name, fourth name, fifth name, first mobile number, second mobile number, third mobile number, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, hundreds and thousands of email IDs. So whenever I have lots of data, then there is a meaning for organized. Okay, then you have to create and plan some structure what structure you want to follow to organize your data and that structure is called data structure okay there is no data type even though Vimal data type is string Rahul is also a string Eric is also a string data type is string but how you want to organize this data okay that is known as DS data structure okay so multiple different data structure available in the market or multiple you can create also by your own okay one of the very famous data structure available in the market the use of this data structure is if you have similar kind of data similar means name 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 mobile number mobile number, mobile number okay if you want to organize the similar kind of data structure uh, similar kind of data okay in some kind of structure the name of the data structure is called list list uh, for other programming perspective those who know other programming language mostly they are known as array there array the array and list is almost the uh, same kind of thing okay so we can use the list and how we can create the list something like this we have to use this symbol to create the list so again guys keep just keep one thing in the mind maybe you guys might know array maybe you know might know list but keep one thing in this mind if you have any requirement that i want to keep lot of data <coughs> Okay, of similar kind and similar category, then use the list is right. I've seen, I've seen a lot of guys do it this way. I want to keep your ID, that I want to keep your name, I want to keep your mobile number, and put the list. Technically, you can store it, but this way of organizing is not good. Right now, thing will store, but in the future, you want to use somewhere for some purpose, right? Then writing the next code will become very complex and sometimes is impossible i'll take you some example in some time but right now just keep one thing in mind right whenever a similar category of data under store right for example i have this db is available you can use this symbol and inside this symbol we can store vimal comma pop comma array comma and something like this so this is the first data 
comma second data comma and here guys in this world the data is also known as items so we have three items here and put the, all the three items inside this data structure is not data type this structure okay then they want to print the db we can print all the data together but if you are if you see the type of it okay it look like a data type is not data type. technically they print list list is a way to organize your data this is called data structure <clears throat> so list is a one of the pre available data structure in python other language also they have mostly with the name called called uh, uh, array okay so <clears throat> data structure so one of the data structure we have is called list okay in this way okay motto is writing the list is not important the syntax is very simple you guys might know only one thing came in the mind if you don't organize data properly for example if you program the data in this way i put my id i put my name i put my email uh, mobile number <coughs> sorry i have to do it equal to obviously because this is the data and if you want to assign any data equals to you write then this data will be stored in this variable obviously instead in the top of your app <coughs> data is stored okay but this is not the better organization part right of my data in the future okay let's say this kind of requirement come up i want to say go to the db pick first name send the mail pick second email address send the name put third email address send the name okay that makes more sense so i can create some kind of loop i'll show you how to do it <coughs> they will pick and send you can pick and send those things they can do there okay but if you have this there's no such logic you create right so how what is use of it technique based story but what is use of it thing ss they you know you know able to find out any great use of this kind of storing the data okay when i explain you the for loop and in the future classes and maybe in today also you guys uh, come to know if you have this it will be very hard to organize and the manage <coughs> okay this is a one uh, one small point i want to tell you here <coughs> next point guys here is um, uh, list is one data uh, structure in this list data structure let's say this is what we have what are item you store here behind the scene every item they give some position number position number and this position number guys is also known as index number so this index they give one index number one index number and they start the index number from 0 0 one mostly in all the language they start with zero but in some of the language they start with one there is a different point but i think in our language i believe if i'm not wrong they start from number one but mostly the index number start from zero there is integer number they start for you what is the relevancy of this number so in my uh, data variable here db okay or let me let me recreate this one the first one i can use up arrow and down arrow to see my all the history of the statements to be created i don't want to print everybody name i only want to print the the first name only so i can write, get i can write the square number or bracket zero and the square close okay it means i'm asking on not print everybody we just go and print the first one only okay. you want to print third one means zero one two eric will print so we can give the index number to print or to retrieve particular value from the rep <clears throat> that can be uh, that there's the guys where we can use this part okay one more thing i want to show you here is let me add some more name here let's say i have one more name let's say this will be um, uh, you know amit okay and let me add let's say this is called eric eric we have uh, tom okay this is the entire data we have okay now in this data okay if you have a requirement i want to print a value from vimal till eric so guys we have a way to give the range okay typically they are not on a range they are known as slice so this entire uh, list we have and this list i want to slice this part so how we can do it so in db you can say start from 0 okay till 0 go to 1 2 and 3 till 3 only slice this part 0 Two three. Last number in the Python for some reason is is exclude. Okay, why I exclude? Again, I have the reason for this. I show you in, in some time. But exclude means if I add three, they will print till two. Two means zero one two. 
so they will print here so if you want to slice some part of it we have some requirement okay requirement will be i have this list of students and i want to send the mail i say only from 1 to 10 send the mail so then this part <coughs> will be very much powerfully useful okay or you can do in this way also i, I would start from 2 till okay so from here till 5 okay okay so we just go and retrieve this data okay also we have, can write one more way you want to start with zero you don't have to write zero by default the numbers start from zero only if you don't type anything they start from zero only so from where will they start till two three months later till two they stop and same way you want to start from two till last in some of the cases we don't know last right i know right now the last is five or four but in some cases maybe thousand and data keep on adding keep on adding <clears throat> okay so i said till two whatever the data we have uh, in this list pick the name and send the mail <clears throat> for example right now i have this much data if i want to add more data in the list then in the db we have one function available <clears throat> and the function name is called append so with the help of append function we can add one more name for example i want to add uh, maybe uh, sara okay so technically the syntax would be something like this okay very important to know <clears throat> this point the syntax will be something like this whenever you create any variables by the way in the python variable is known as a reference but what is the exact meaning of reference we will discuss sometime in very detail okay for some time let's treat this name as a variable so whenever you have any variable what a type would be either data type or whatever data way they want to organize is called data structure <clears throat> whatever they use every data type okay it's been actually planned by python because we are using python as a programming language every data is planned by python and every data type or the data structure okay has come up with their own internal predefined functionality or feature that are known as function okay for example for example in the list okay I want to add something in the future. This is a very common requirement we have. But in the list, I want to sort some name. In the list, I want to have I might have some name and numbers. I want to sort the numbers, put in the order format. In the list, I want to read something. Okay, in the list, I want to add in the top. In the list, I want to remove the last. So this is a very common requirement we have. <clears throat> it is you can think it is something like yeah, we have a list of students. I very common requirement in the list would be we might we might have more students i want to find some particular student name or i want to search where this student lies with position number so we can go to this position and do something <clears throat> we update something delete something okay so it is very common so i can give one term here in this list okay i can create this list okay in this list i can add something remove something edit something is called update edit modify i can delete something okay or maybe at, at any point in time i can go and read something so this is a very common requirement we have right so normally in the real work i think don't think in the programming perspective let's say you have one event is going on you have one pen and paper this is a very common thing you create update delete the name read the name okay this is very common practice we always do Okay, that is the reason we say list. But these are the what? In the list that you have, in the list that you have, these are the very common operations you perform, or these are the very common thing you want to perform. I can use the word called operations. Or very common operations you perform. Okay. And because your Python language knows this very common operation you have to perform, so they give you they give you pre-created operations for you, and this operation guys are known as functions. They give you pre internal function for your respective data structure. We have the data structure, their requirements are different. So they give you different operations or different functions. And sometimes this function is also known as methods. So they give you different method to performing the operations in the list. Method means I want to add something, I want to read something, I want to find something. One of the example of the method is called append. Append. So append is one of method. So in this db as a in, in this db as a 
um, uh, as a list because a list how will we know this because we have created right we know this is a list we can use the data type or the type function and say who are you and the list or because you are list so in the list we have you can do some limited kind of capabilities you have operation you can perform so I have given you pre-created methods okay why because this data structure which one list who created Python because Python created so they give their pre-created method but there's also one some more way guys <coughs> in the programming world you can also create your own data structures your own way okay where you can you plan your own way to organize your data you can plan your own way which method you want to perform what operation you can perform what operation they can't perform you can also plan depend upon your use case your projects you can also plan for this they are normally covered in the concept called data structure and they are normally known as ADT ADT <coughs> abstract data types means if you want to create your own data structure it's called ADT so right now guys we are not into as such DSA training data structure and algorithm this training is a core programming language training so we are not going for as such data structure prospect to create our own maybe some of the example I might show you okay otherwise graph tree try uh, heap uh, these are the example or <clears throat> you know much more examples we have where we go and customize our own thing right now we are not into, not into data structure training even though I've done a lot of training in this area and all, all advanced level also but we don't require this. I'm just giving this as a knowledge perspective. <coughs> this point. Okay. Here we are going to use almost all the data structure created by the Python. Every data structure for different different way to organize multiple different things. Here we are just focusing on if you want to organize the data, similar category of data, mail, 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 mobile number, mobile number, mobile number. Then if this thing come in the mind, always <coughs> call and uh, remind list data structure in this list data structure right what can we do <coughs> we can do curd c u r d where c means create r means read u means update d means delete so this is a very common operation we have to perform on the list that word is very logical we always do in the real world also <coughs> okay that was we do so right now we are doing one simple operation this is a list we already have I want to modify or want to add something for this we have an append function let's say I want to append the name cursor so one name will be append in the last index see here last index they prepared let me add one more <coughs> maybe maybe um, you know Linux for example add one more okay now we have the code already and according to this code I say all the name till from to till last I don't know how much we will have my name is keep on adding customers keep on adding just send the mail to everyone <clears throat> so they will take the till last so in this cases this kind of uh, uh, operation will help for and guys in this context okay wherever you write this symbol colon symbol this will look like a range but technically these are not a slice or slicing operator so python has a slicing operator okay to tell this part i want to slice in most of the language sometimes you have to write our own code for this but python has given you pre-created you just quickly slice and use it and these are some of the syntax i want to tell you here is now one more thing guys because db is a one kind of one kind of uh, <coughs> list data structure okay so append is one method available or one operation you can perform on the list or what else I can perform okay so either you can go to Python and search Python uh, can you tell me in the list data structure because you created you know better which data uh, which method we can perform okay or there's one function here called dir you can answer dir tell db is a one list we have that we created in this db what all method we can uh, use so guys, there's a lot of list of method we have any name without any this double e underscore is the method names okay for example we can append something we can count we can uh, reverse we can sort we can remove so these are the methods available right now I explain you append as and when things require I can keep on explaining you 
the next part also okay how to use index and how to use insert but typically guys i wanted to tell you here one thing don't have you we don't have to memorize everything <clears throat> you should know the concept then ask to the document okay i want to implement the list can you tell me in the list can i copy something can i insert something can i remove something so you can use a dir command to find which method available or you can go to a python documentation in the google or maybe this is a very very great document they have here here documentation from here you can go and see what things they support okay so that's what uh, i want to tell you here is so this one point second thing even though for example let's say i want to <coughs> use index so again db is my list i want to use index index is a one operation or method or function normally we write function with with parenthesis why parenthesis again we have logic for this in the function topic i will discuss to you okay if i hit enter they say error why because this function i don't know how to use it for example the append i use some string here should i type some string some number i don't know okay let me try something let's say index uh, let's say type 2 i don't know what i have to type here so again they give error not in list so point here is by looking at the help dir they give the uh, method name but how to use this method again how i know there is no created by us right if you create by all your own that's called add nobody cover in dsl level training so we in we have created we know how to use it right but here this is not created by us so how i know so again you go to documentation or again there is one more help function available here and say db is a one um, Uh, uh, variable we created and inside this we have index as a one function. Okay, so can you tell me help of this function how we can use this? So if I hit enter, they tell you <coughs> the some line meaning also what they do for you. Sometimes they give the meaning. Okay, they will give the index number and they also say tell you the use. And they say how to use. They have to give the value. Means. in your db variable there's a multiple values you have which value index you have to find give the value that is something like this in db index is a function and i want to find the index number of tom i don't know where tom located and let's say you have a list of paper and you have to find where tom located so i, I can find some other information about tom or okay, i can do something with tom i can modify the tom okay so here they give me uh, the index number of the tom that's what the guys the help is talking about they will give the index of the value index means the position number of the value and send so the inside the index you have to use the value okay what are these there are different form we'll discuss in some time nothing very technical enter so they said tom is the data item located the 0 1 2 3 and 4 <clears throat> and because we found the tom position now we can ask db now you know the term position number 4 okay 4 now at this position what i want to do you have to modify the name let's say my name was wrong the actual name was tommy now i can modify the name see here they they modified this may be your requirement <coughs> okay you have but let me do one more time this point let's say i want to modify the name of pop i want to make it poppy so i can say i said index can you tell me where the position of pop now we by some way know but let's say we have a huge millions and billions of data so this will very much far for some time okay so you can think guys it is something like a search function so anybody who knows something of searching searching means i am i am looking for sara so this sara no 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 sara no, no, yes which person you are it let's say sixth person or fifth person okay so index is a one method okay Uh, sorry, index is a one method or the operation given by Python because they created this data structure called list. Okay, and what they have given, they given this capability of searching. So anybody know about search algorithm or when you guys learn about DSA actual training, a means algorithm. So this one algorithm called search algorithm. They are known as linear search algorithm. So anybody know this or will know this? Okay, this is work like a linear search. again giving extra knowledge i says you don't require to know this 
means what DS and what linear search algorithm. But this is the this method is working like a linear search. They search one by one. When they find the answer, they give the Poisson number. <coughs> okay, this one point. Now we know the Poisson number. Now my requirement is at this position, at this position, I want to change <coughs> the pop name to poppy for example. Okay. Now here, if you see here, <coughs> this is two type, two steps process. Okay. First step we find the person. Second step we change the data. Okay. Rather than we do this, we can do same thing in the one single step. How we can replace the one, one with this particular statement okay now what will it will do see here there is no error come up in this example now you know one one thing nowadays <coughs> nowadays in today's world right because when you start creating applications and the software and the program okay your code become very big very very big lots of lines we have okay so shorter the code would be it, in most of the cases they give you a lot of value and they will also prove you, you as a great and the best developers so to become the best developer in the world tons of things we have to take care of it right maybe i keep on telling you what those things you can take you can take care but to become a best developer in the world one of the feature or activity you should have is make the code as much as short as possible Try to do as much thing as in the one line. Okay. Sometimes also known as in line. As much thing you can do in one single line or in line, you have to do it. That is the reason guys why functional programming is so famous in the market. What is functional programming? I'm not discussing right now, but maybe in the future class I have some discussion on it. Okay. Why functional programming? We will discuss. Okay. But here just keep it in mind. If you try to do everything in single line, as when well as possible that makes your code very shorter and that will give you a lot of benefit what benefit they give you i'll give you some idea and hint in the topic called as we don't have this topic actually in the program the functional program is an entire different area of programming world but i give some idea in the future class you get the idea you you will be you know uh, well understood in this topic in the future class but that's what guys we have done here <clears throat> rather than i had done this part in two steps first we find the index then we change the person okay in one single step is been done here name has been changed okay so the syntax would be something like this if you try to understand nothing again if you see it technically so in one single statement <coughs> in one single statement okay what i did i write one more function behind it inside it so technically in one statement if you write one more statement inside this like embedded one function or one statement inside one more function or one more statement so your programming language guys always go in depth they try to find do you have one more statement embedded or one more function embedded if yes they will first run it <coughs> they will first run it they'll find their answer and this part they will replace with their answer so internally this part has been replaced by db1 means this part replaced by one because the answer they give you one and then what are the remaining code would be they will run for you okay so point guys here is if you have one big statement okay inside the big statement somewhere you have some multiple small small statement that's called we embedded this way with one single line it's called inline in this context they will first run it get the output replace here they run it, get the output, replace here. Then it becomes a final statement. They run the final statement for you. Everything happened behind the scene, but for the user and the developer perspective, or the go, guy who see the code, they say, okay, one single statement they did with. Right now we are learning the code. For us, it looks like a complex look and feel code, but as you become more and more comfortable <coughs> with the code, okay, now it looks like very clear. It looks like very clear. Wherever we have a pop, we will replace the pop. Where we have let's say linux it would be uh, replaced let's say i'm replaced with my company name linux word yeah, i'm mostly the guys elder okay so look at like very clear right in one single line. otherwise you know what happened some part we are searching uh, the name somewhere then we are replacing somewhere so 
bigger code we have to find here and there take a lot of time <clears throat> now by looking at one single line think clear what exactly we're doing what operation we are to perform what is our final requirement so linux has been replaced with linux world <clears throat> okay so this makes more sense so i have in this training okay there's lots of concept of inline or uh, functional concept programming concept i keep on telling even though we have just started okay like least comprehensive like like lambda like much more we keep on discussing again and again <clears throat> okay so uh, this is the uh, one more point so i highly recommend whatever the data type you have or data structure you have um, just check what functions they have uh, then try with the help and try to create this this kind of code whatever is possible <clears throat> okay and this is one thing second thing i see here there's one more some lot of thing also here underscore this called doubly underscore what are the meaning of this so we have a detailed discussion on these things in the upcoming classes especially when the topic of called functional overloading come up or classes come up so at that time i will discuss more about this particular keywords <clears throat> so i'm just parking this point for the future okay one more interesting thing i want to tell you about is a string let's say s is a one variable and the other variable i am giving my company phone name let's say linux <coughs> world okay uh, one of the part of the linux world is called hashtag <coughs> okay so we have <coughs> this data um, now what i'm doing right now right now i am writing everything in this live interpreter why because i can show you console very fastly enter and give the output live interpreter but only bad thing about this live interpreter is if i exit nothing will save for this i can go for this document but only change the document i have saved then go and run it then save and go and run it it will and and want to waste the time okay so that is a reason guys we are going for third method for next part the third method would be okay there is a one ide by python and this id is automatically stored uh, for the python with the anaconda you know guys in this case we have installed the python with the anaconda distributor so when you install python with anaconda distributor they store one id for us even though we can store app separately also but they install this id for us name of this id is called jupiter what my id is is integrated development environment okay means we will have one single code page where we type the code run the code get the output see the sync and save the code also so in one single document everything would be there okay this called id so jupiter is one very famous id we use a lot so if you work in if you work in the top world of machine learning or uh, maybe in the quantum computers jupiter is a very common thing you always might have seen if you have worked in any of these areas but you can use jupiter in any of the areas okay so jupiter is just a id of for the python okay other language also you can use jupiter there's a different one but jupiter is very famous for the python language so now onward i am not going to write the code here i'll share this code to you right with a screenshot okay and neither here what i'm going to do i am going to open a new terminal so your code will save so i can share the screen to you or share the screen to you okay i'll go to my again document and same python folder where we copy this code and now onward okay all the remaining mostly all the remaining code in the future i will write in the jupiter so jupiter is one command automatic you will have if you install python with the anaconda okay if you install python with any other way jupiter might not be available then you can install the jupiter how how with the pip command what is pip command i'll tell you in some time okay but right now i'm going to use jupiter and they give you notebook notebook means we give a book we can type the code so this is a command we are going to you run here <coughs> okay and guys these are the concept what i'm explaining you right now here if you collect all this concept together with any kind of any kind of complex and biggest code in any of the technology area you can build on but right now i'm building the concept and the syntax and the approach also right if you want to do something list what can you do okay so these are the things i'm building we have just started but slowly slowly uh, much more powerful concept gonna come up but here 
in this page they will show you all the files from the current folder which folder from which folder we are in this so from this folder all the file that you have they'll show you here okay but in this folder this is called our workspace okay whichever new file you want to create you can create from also here from here from here also but i'm going to create a new file with a notebook what is notebook when i click this this new page come up and this page uh, why is not come up why not come up because i believe my program due to some reason stopped oh actually taking some time <coughs> come up that this is called a notebook okay means it's like a live interpreter i can type my code run i can run the x run as a live interpreter but the good thing is by same time my code is also been saved i can go back to any lines of code enter right i can go back enter right so a lot of flexibility they give to you so we are going to use jupyter a lot and a lot of jupyter give you a lot of powerful internal facility apart from python that is called magical word uh key concepts we will discuss also okay right now this much is enough to know and here i can give a file name let's say this is my more basics right some name i'm giving so they create this file with this name even though this file you can see from here okay so in the future with when you want to open this file click here the file open you will have your code with you the only thing is obviously to save the code click okay. or they will normally do is save the code automatically for after some 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 minutes okay so here we are going to use this one more thing i want to show you tell you here before i run if i say y equals to let's say 10 okay so this area where i'm typing this code is known as cell c e l l and when you want to run entire cell will run so in this cell you might have write two lines of code then i want to do x plus z then x plus z i want to store in one variable let's say p then i want to print p so in the if you write four statement in a one box called cell so when you run the cell entire cell will run you can't run one line at one go entire cell will run how you click here in the run they will run it for you why is 10 this 20 this is 30 we store in the p and 30 will print okay so if you want to run particular statement only just type one statement on one cell so that then only that particular statement will run for you second thing is let's say i want to change here to 30 this one we will think about any id we can go back change the number where do I, where you want to run it guys okay, sometimes very hard to go up and click to run so jupyter give you one shortcut and shortcut would be shift enter so press shift enter okay they will run this entire cell and they go back and they will that's all shift enter they will run the entire cell and they go to next cell so shift enter is a one shortcut mostly we can use here for example i want to run this okay i want to run and plus also i want to create a new cell after this automatically for this we have shortcut called alt tab or alt key plus enter okay so let me write here if you want to run the cell shift plus enter together you can press from the keyboard okay or we can use alt plus enter also is one of the one more plus means together okay difference is shift they run the cell they go to next cell all tap enter they run the cell and they go to next cell and they get a new one also so there is some shortcut of the jupyter mostly this shortcut is sometimes useful like this there is much more shortcut as we progress in this training as and when the shortcut required i keep on telling one more small thing just to know in the python is in the python if you <clears throat> if you uh, let's say i am typing uh, let's say print 90 and print but if you want to comment this line this is this symbol you can use so line will be there is commented comment means it will be there in the code but it won't be interpreted or not be run by your programming language okay they won't see this okay comment is normally used to make the code more clear means we can write why we are doing we are practicing we are learning so code is a good practice to write in a code to tell i know we are just learning but normally when the code become very big we can keep on telling this code okay that why we write this code what is use case why we plan this area of code so having the comments 
is good practice in the programming world. <coughs> so guys, this is about very basic about the Jupyter. So now onward, all the code I am going to write in Jupyter, this page is called notebook only. Okay, so let's come back to our point called string. Uh, guys, I'm just, uh, I just need 10, 20 more minutes, then we go for some small break. And after the break, we can again continue with the same part. <coughs> okay, so let's say some look, let's talk something about string. Let's say I'm going to create a string called S. And let's say this is the Linux world. Okay, string. Now, one interesting thing, guys, about the string in mostly in most of the language, I can say. But one of the interesting thing about the string is, okay, according to Python, a string is a sequence of correct characters. Okay, what I mean by this, okay, every character has their own position. This is a position number zero, this is a position number one, this is a position number two, the position number three, something like this. Okay, like a list. So you can think is a list of characters. It means all the operations that you can perform on the list, almost all the operations you can perform here. Okay, for example, S, can you tell me what you have at the position number zero? L. Okay, S, can you tell me what is the position you have person number three? U. Or can you tell me what all that are till from three till last? See here, till three till last. Or can you tell me what data you have from three to seven? This data. So we can again do the slicing operator directly on the on the list. So almost whatever you could do in the list as the slicing operation, we can do it. So it means string is also one kind of data structure where they are organizing and multiple characters for us. So multiple characters they are organizing in one area in double quote single quote. So string is also one kind of data structure uh, you have. Okay. And if you see the dir command, so string also come with multiple um, uh, function available. So in this string, these are the functions available on the string. Very, very useful function, right? Because guys, lots of use cases in the real world. If you're working something on machine learning like NLP, okay, mostly you have to deal with string and lots of operation we have to do on the string to do something. Okay, or maybe if you go for some any interview round, they give you lots of questions about related to string. So if you want, you have to do lots of operation on the string to do something. So these are the functions uh, useful. I, I will keep on telling guys almost all the function in today's and upcoming classes. Like every function will do something uh, great for you. Okay, for example, uh, in this function, uh, there's, a, there's a function called capitalize. Let me copy this. What it will do for you, I know right now. Let me comment this line first of all. Okay, I know right now, but let's say we don't know. So I can say, I want to take a help. <clears throat> S, can you tell me what this capital function will do? So S, you are the, mm, the variable or the data structure, data, uh, variable I can say, or data structure here. Inside you, we have one function or the method or the operation available. Can you tell me what they do for you? Okay, so they say, Okay, when you run this, first of all, you don't have to type anything in, in the address. Directly run as it is. But what they do, they will capitalize your string. Means first character they make it upper, and remaining will be lower only. It means if you run the S with capitalize and this syntax you to perform, it is then the help. Okay, and they will capitalize the first one. It was not capitalized actually initially, but they will capitalize the first one, and the remaining part will be same. Well, guys, it is something useful in the document formatting. You have document and normally with the first line in the paragraph, you will start with capital letter. So this will, we can run the capitalize. They will make your document formatted properly. Just a simple example. But again, motto is not the capitalize here. Motto is again, I am explaining you uh, the, the, the flow, how we can find the help and how we can find what we are looking for. One more thing guys about the Jupyter is, S is a string, you can add dot. So you don't have to type dir. Here guys, after dot, you can type tab one time, tab key, and they show you all the functions available. So you don't have to write dir and then find it. There you can directly find all the functions available. For example, again, capitalize. Now what capitalize can do for you, you do again don't have to go for help in the Jupyter especially. Okay, what can you do? You can use shift tab key they give you the detail 
meaning directly here. If you can use plus and they tell you the entire detail what the function do and how to use it. And the how to use a function is called signature of the function. They say this is the way you have to use it. Okay. So guys, here you can use a one shortcut from the Jupyter. It's called shift plus your tab key it's together. Then they can put in the mouse here and then then show you. For example, as we have <coughs> one more function, for example, let's say um, uh, end width. Okay. I don't know how to work. I know, but let's say we don't know. Okay. So I press shift tab and say, they say here, what they do for you, if you try to read it, they will say, uh, it will check. Okay. You have to put some suffix. They will say, if you, uh, they will say, they tell, does this get this as start or end with something? Okay. Means if I write D here, is it true? Means they say this string S, we are checking does this end with D? If yes, I will throw Boolean true, means yes. But if I say does this end with T, we know it's not, not end with T, so they false. No, it won't <coughs> end with T. Or I can say does it end with RLD? Please say yeah, RLD, same sequence RLD, yes. Okay. So this is what the end with, you know, the name is all simple and with does this string end with this? If yes, I said true. Okay. And now because they said true, then they can add some conditions on it. Let me give one interesting example. Let's say we collected lots of list of email IDs from our customers. Let's say one email ID will be email at the rate lanisworld.com. Second email will be, let's say Amit at the rate gmail.com. Next time we have something, let's say pop at xv.com. This is a different email ID of list we collected. <clears throat> okay. And now what, what are we looking for? I'm looking for email ID that has gmail.com. Only those email ID I will run, otherwise remaining email ID I will remove. Okay. So what I will do, I will go to mail and say, what is first one? This one. This is what is like a string only, right? Now I will use this Android function. Android. Here guys, my string is this one. And from where the string is coming from this particular variable. So I will copy this and remove the as from this. Okay, this is like a string, right? This will give me this one. This one. In this string, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for gmail.com. So my end with the gmail.com. So right here, or maybe I can add the gmail.com maybe for example. They say false because this string is not and with gmail.com. Now in this list, I will go for next. Okay. And next number will be yeah, this is zero person, this is one person. So this is next is one. Is what? True. Means this second email ID in my list is contained in Gmail. So I can write some more extra code and say whatever email we have, we can create a separate list for this. So guys, here the role of loop come in play. Right now I'm doing it manually, but I can, I can use a loop here. Loop is keep on changing this number, zero, one, two, three, four, and then all the true will come up. We can use the loop. So here guys, to, to solve this problem, so the problem would be, I want to collect all the Gmail addresses and send in the different list. Because I want to send the mail, I want to send the mail only to Gmail addresses, not any other addresses. Okay. To check this is Gmail or not, we can write true or false and here the use of if condition come in play. Okay. And to keep on doing again and again, repeatedly, then we have kind of loop, for loop will come in play. So how to write if conditions and for loop, what is those concept of for loop if condition? I will explain you first, then how, how can we do in the Python, then I explain you, then I come back to this topic and show you how to do it. Again guys here. I try to do the same thing in one single line. In one single line, we have achieved it. Okay, to find out does this exist or not. Okay, even though we have just started, lots of things powerfully we again do here. But important point here is in the S as a string, all the capability they have here is, and most of the cases we don't know how to use this. Okay, how to use this. So is upper, I say, I don't know how to use, take me help. You can use this and they will check the string is up or not. 
okay so if i say, say this they're false okay? because my s string is not in the uppercase okay but if i say s is this start function all with is and maybe they might have l lower okay true my string is lower case they say true this is a lower okay so maybe in my some cases my if my string is lower i will capitalize this if it's smaller i will do this so those things we can do it but who will check for me these are the functions and method available by the python for you something we can create ourselves there's a different point but they are available by python one last thing before we go for break okay <clears throat> if you talk about your list let's say this is the list we have email address okay let me add some more email address directly here so we can append also but directly, let me directly here let's say this is a n1 new address and dot com okay and this one more address i'm going to put p at the rate k dot com multiple addresses and putting let me add one more uh, chris at the rate gmail dot com so list of the email addresses we have and guys this list sometimes bigger so we can give enter also it's also workable that's all workable or maybe better way maybe look and feel would be something like this this one enter and uh, so look like clean list uh, right we know what is there okay and the, we know these are the different different data we have okay a list of the email addresses we have okay email addresses now in this email addresses let me run and alt enter it go to next line as in email addresses i want to print from second to fifth the printer so second till fifth the printer <clears throat> but if you have a requirement you want to print first then you want to skip then second you want to skip then third you want to skip you know pick one by one okay oh we want to pick one then second skip on the pick third again you want to skip how to work okay so technically technically guys you know this syntax the syntax means start from zero till fifth So till here fifth the printer start from zero till print okay but if you type this one okay five colon may start from fifth till last so start from fifth until last is only one okay but if you type this one email colon it may start from zero till last so they print till last so this is sometime equals to this one. So if you type this, if you type this, they are the same meaning as such. Okay. But now what I'm trying to tell you here is, okay, uh, this symbol sometimes is helpful that we can't do in this. For example, by default behavior of the printing or the reading of the list is, especially the slicing operator, I can say, okay, is we start from the first one zero till last one. Let's say last is by since let's say five or six here. till last okay but how they read they go to first one read it then they go to second one they read they go third one they read they go fourth one they read it it is called they start from zero then jump then jump then jump then jump so they are jumping the jump is also known as step and the byte for size of the step is one me they are jumping from zero to one one to two two three the byte for size of the jump is one and where it is written it is written after this column so first column is known as start from where to start second is where to end and third is known as jump size or i can say the step size so this is syntax of the slicing operator so technically what can i do i can say start from 1 and till 6 and jump 1 there's a by default if you write or not jump means by one jump one so first Second, third, and fourth. But if I say it's not till limit till Chris the the print. But if I say no, I want jump of two. So start from one, then they add one plus two, they reach here. Then they jump two, they reach here. Okay. So in this case, what you will see? Okay, they start from one Amit. I mean zero one Amit is one. Then they add two means. the person is 1 1 2 is 1 2 is 3 there is 3 3 2 is 5 there is 5 they do 
okay or maybe i can write email i don't know we start from zero till last but i want jump to be three okay three means they will <coughs> uh, start from zero first we will come up then after three they will print this okay i don't know how many data you have i want to pick every alternate every third alternate data if you have some requirement maybe you are doing some kind of testing on the data you want to you have billions of data you want to pick first data then 100 data then next 100 data then next 100 data you pick randomly or some some sample data i can say so especially in you know analytics world or data analytics world right you have to collect some sample data all right after 100 10 steps so this can be useful or maybe some more other way will be but this is again one of the idea and use case you can use there okay so this also the jump we have but the meaning word guys would be let me talk about this line this line means start from one then add two start from one this is one then add two one plus two is what three get the job three then now you are three that again add two you become a five or get the five so technically this step size means add the index number so if your index number you start is one the next index number would be would be one plus your step size step size is two for example so it would be one plus two is what three so that's what the line means okay now based on this concept we can create one interesting example here with very very famous typical example this is the list i have and i want to print my list in the reverse order okay in reverse order okay so this list i have so i want to first print chris p and pop amit and vivan reverse order so what we can use one trick here what this line means even though guys i want to tell you one more small thing very small thing in the list this person is zero this is called one this is called two three four and five but last person guys also have some meaning number okay so in the list last data also have some index number is called minus one okay so if you want to just want to print last one you can write minus one if you want to print second last one you can print minus two okay or you want to print uh, last three so you can say start from minus three till last again range you can write start from minus three means from n till chris so they will print till n so typically guys in the list okay the way uh, they have created okay is they know the person of the first one second one third one because zero one two three and plus they also know the person of last one also last one second last one third last one they they know this by the minus one and minus two sometimes i want to pick last 10 last 20 last one so very quickly rather we count okay last is there with thousand number one person is very hard right we can tell uh, whatever you did uh, you have minus one person just uh, give to us that's what we can do very quickly <clears throat> okay so this one one point now based on this concept let's get one small program here not not a program but a small a small concept this is my email id i have i want to print my email id in the reverse order so what can we do here one small trick we can use we can start from zero we can end till last okay and then we can use minus one here okay so what it will do okay so logically this line means this line is exactly equals to it start from zero till last let's say six minus one because this number is from zero means zero person let's say we have drawn six data last number let's say six and minus one we already write so this line here is equal to this one now in this case <coughs> what step means <coughs> minus one means minus one means this number will add with us you know this was the way i explained to you okay what is the index number to be add with the step size three in our case start number is zero step size one if we add zero with minus one it will give minus one it means email will take the last one first okay 
means they pick the last one. Now the current index number is what? Minus one. Okay, so now in next go minus one. If we again add with the step again, because now right last time now they reach minus one, and now wherever you are, we'll again go to step minus one. Okay, then here what they give? They give me they give me minus two. Then second last will print. Now where you are right now at minus two. When we jump again, how much far I jump with minus one? This is my step size. So again add it become minus three. So technically, what you see guys here. Okay, this line is equal to this line, but this line, guys, is actually printing first minus one, then minus two, then minus three. It means they are what they're doing. They are printing the reverse. Okay, and here this line means as you as you assume the last, so when you reach the last in the reverse, this is last. Stop this. Okay, this how it works. So let me comment this line. So guys, if you want to do multi-line comment the Python, this is the syntax we can use. Triple quotes. With the help of triple quotes, we can do multi-line comments in the Python. Triple quote has some more use in the Python. I'll show you, but this also the useful for multi-line comments. All the lines have been commented. Now, when I run this, okay, what you will see? There's a lot of confusion here because they also print for you. Let me go to the next line. In the actually in the ID, <laughs> the reverse this. The actual email is this one. But here they reverse this entire list. Okay, so if you want to reverse this list, this is the one trick we can use. It's not given by Python, but we can use this concept just for learning purpose purpose also, or the trick also. Otherwise, in the list, this function available already. If you use see the reverse function available, <coughs> how to use this? In this way, we can use. This available, but in some of the cases, whatever we are looking for is not available. So by using our basic concepts and other concepts, we can connect together and create something our own. So for example, this is one of the example. By the reverse available, if it is not available, <coughs> we can we can create our own. For example, in email, I want to reverse the reverse things. So now if I say email, they reversed. Yes, actual data is this one. They reverse. Only difference is okay in reverse function, guys. They reverse the actual data. My initial data was this one, right? This one. Let me rewrite. it. Actual data was this one, and this data stored my my seat or my variable called email. If I use the reverse function, <coughs> reverse function, they will update my real list. They reverse my real list here. They reverse. Chris will come first, and Bevel will come last. When some scenario, you want to reverse the thing, but you don't want to update in your real, real uh, variable. Then, but this is the real variable. In that context, also using this kind of pre-installed function might not be useful. In this case, this can be useful. So they show you the reverse answer. Okay, and but your actual output is not being reversed. Or maybe this one I can store in maybe an R where R email variable, it reverse email. So we reverse, we store in different variable altogether. This variable, wherever you want to use, we can use it in the reverse way. But actual data is one changed. It's be there in the same way. So depend guys, what you're looking for? Do you want to re reverse the real one, actual one, or uh, or you would like to uh, only reverse and use another variable so we can use the reverse way uh, in another way right and in, in, in the in the example <clears throat> okay but because guys string is also work like a uh, work like a uh, uh, you know list this is string we had okay same logic so if you see string string do you have a reverse function available reverse reverse no. So in the string, okay, a reverse function is not available. In the list, it is available. A string is not available. So now, if you're not available, now this concept we can apply here. Okay, the concept would be this string I want to reverse. Say I start with string with column, means all the string, but here I will do the same concept I explained to you. Okay, 
So I, they will first burn three, then minus two, then minus three, minus four, and they will till, till the last. So this string will be reversed. Okay. So by knowing the concept, maybe in some of the data structure or the data type, if some function and operation is not available by your respective programming language, in this case of Python, then what can we do? We can use some of the basic concept what we are doing started already and applying this concept trying some more concept whether we see in the future class and create our own thing what we are looking for okay and guys again i'm repeating we are just learning the basics it's a core programming concepts and python syntax but as we build and move to next text topic your conceptually program will be clear then this concept i give you a lot of idea also in, in, in the in next classes the next point you can use this concept to apply in respect to technological domain from data science to IoT to cloud to big data to DevOps to XYZ field or maybe writing the scripting also because most of the companies we do the automation in the Windows and Linux system with the Python scripting. So if you write the Python scripting also these are the very 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 core requirement knowledge you should have to make your scripting language also more powerful <clears throat> right. So this is one some point guys. So that's all from my side right now. We are still continuing this training, but I want to go and we want to go for the break of around 25 minutes. Okay, after this 25 minutes, uh, we will right now my time according to my system time is around uh, I still am 4.32 evening, means 16.32 evening. So around 28 minutes, minute I can say, exit 5 o'clock guys, uh, 5 o'clock p.m. means 17.00 IST time we will continue any query if you have so maybe guys two days after the session completed i will on the chat of the youtube those who are listening me directly on the youtube live streaming i can end or on the ch uh, chat message there so you can put your query on the chat there or those who are part of hash 13 community you can put your query in your respective community we will give the community access there for your lifetime you can ask your query anytime plus on the comment box below in your video you can put there so technoverter will reply you soon refresh the page after some time you get your, your reply or maybe mostly reply will get in your email id also come up okay so guys see you right now i'm not taking any query right now we just started so break time 17 or oh, ist time we will resume the break okay bye see you take care okay
सो वेलकम बैक गाइस वी आर स्टिल इन टू बेसिक ऑफ पाइथन स्टिल गोइंग ऑन आई कैन से ओके बट डोंट ट्रीट इट इज जस्ट ओनली द पाइथन आई एम ऑल्सो कंसिडरिंग दैट यू गाइज आर वेरी न्यू इन प्रोग्रामिंग वर्ल्ड ओके सो वेन एवर द रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ लिस्ट कम अप वेन एवर द रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ वेरेबल्स कम अप राइट आई कीप ऑन एक्सप्लेनिंग यू दोज कम्स कॉन्सेप्ट ऑल्सो what is data structure and data types so what are the new terms come up explaining to you interesting thing is this concept these terms are same in any of the programming language <clears throat> and now doesn't doesn't matter which of the programming language you guys work, want to work on these concepts are same okay the only difference would be every programming language has their own respect to syntax okay mostly the same but in some of the part there might be different so the big difference you will see is the syntax and one more big difference you see in programming to programming world okay uh, uh, they give you some pre uh, useful tools to quickly do the things very small example nothing very complex but very small example is for example let's say this is my <coughs> a string in this string we know we have uh, we know we have two words linux and world okay we have two word but if you want to find out does linux is is there in this string for example for example let me create one more string this is this is linux world hello that's all this one string we have right <coughs> and i want i am looking for something that in this string i am looking for a word called linux if linux is available tell me true or false tell me yes or no so i can do something so let's say you are writing some machine learning programming or data science programming or doing analytics tools and we are requirement is we are looking for some kind of spamming term or some some vulnerable word and if this word come up i want to write some mail uh, spam filters for for emails <coughs> something like this so any kind of pawn or uh, vulnerable word come up i want to stop the mail or it would be any kind of cases would be i am doing some kind of filtering some searching something i have i am the linux admins or cloud admins we have a lot of records we have that is called logs and i am i am looking for something when this term come up just show me where it is so it would be anything right so this is a very common requirement you have in any of the area requirement is you have a big is record one big string okay in the string i am looking for okay does we have the word linux or not so what we are looking for we are looking for the linux word where inside this string s is word string okay actually we know it is there but let's say what python say python say yes it is true it is there so in is a pre defined internal keyword of python okay who will do this thing for you for example i'm looking for does i'm looking for women my name here okay is the in the string no it is not there false <clears throat> so is again this guy is the one concept is is very from tool to tool language to language okay in some language okay you have to write your own personal code step by steps create one algorithm what is algorithm we'll see in the future classes and then then Thing will work, but because Python say because my this tool is going to use lot of lot of the uh, in place in data science or data analytics world, big data world, Linux admin guys. So these are the very common utility they always need. So why to create again things from the scratch? So let's provide them the pre created thing <clears throat> so that they can use it very much quickly. Okay, so that's what they they tell you, and now because they are telling giving you a boolean output. Okay, let's say I'm I'm going to store this boolean output in variable. Let's say, um, uh, you know, find variable, <coughs> and if you see the find variable output is what true. If you see the data type also, of the find is what <coughs> true boolean. Sorry. Now, wherever we can use boolean, we can use it. For example, there's one concept we're gonna I'm, I'm going to uh, explain right now. It's called if or else conditions. You know, conditions. Okay, or comparisons. so there we can use it very quickly i can say if linux is there then send the mail to my admin okay that we found linux or we found some spam mails 
okay or otherwise we keep on finding so this kind of logics we can create and on the top of this there's one powerful concept going to come up is called regex so it is a, it will be a very advanced topic we'll discuss in upcoming classes so if you comfortable with regex what is regex means regular expression is the one very advanced topic we'll see uh, when you comfortable with this here we can create a lot of powerful things we can write <clears throat> they will go more detail uh, inside your string your data and find something more for you that is more meaningful or more insightful but um, just my point here is to just only give you this tool or maybe this tool you know uh, your slice operator like this tons of things is available in the python that is very very quickly uh, usable and useful for, for example one example maybe okay example would be is very common thing we use for example x equals to 5 for example we have y equals to 10 uh, let's say we have one this example and if you want to change the value you want to replace the x with y and y with x this go swap or swap okay so you know swap the thing so it's very common thing we need so if you write any algorithm any planning any code swapping the thing is a very common utility and mostly in the other programming language if you want to swap the value from x to y so what you normally do first we will store uh, y in some temporary variable as a z so z is again 10 then we say say x now i will replace your value with with uh, y and then uh, x i will replace your value with z okay so thing is been now sure now x become 10 and y is 5 so normally typical uh, <coughs> programming world let me write the code directly here so if you want to swap the thing this is very common thing if you do almost everywhere swap the data between two variable <coughs> these are the two variables we have let me even do right here <coughs> x to 5 and y equals to 10 okay to replace the value x and y we have to use some temporary variable like z and then we use this why we want temporary variable otherwise when you swap this x if you add x in y then y value will be lost then how you get the y value to be stored in x so that's usually we use some temporary variable so this is very simple kind of code if you try to see and now data has been been swapped <clears throat> but now python because very common thing in the python if you understand this concept you don't understand the concept doesn't matter okay if same thing if you want to do in the python that we topic you know that programming language what can you do let's say your x is 5 again i'm repeating and y is 10 right and if you want to swap x <coughs> and y i can also print in this way also rather we print one by one we can put the comma both the value will printed x is 5 and y is 10 okay so when you want to swap what can you do you can write x comma y equals to y comma x that's all just by one single statement without using any extra temporary variable okay and by just one one single statement you want the statement look very intuitive also very simple also why it look like y is going to add in x and x is going to add in y look like it is we are swapping the thing or swapping the things and now if you run try to try to run x and y initially x was 5 now it become 10 y is 5 let's swap <coughs> okay so swapping again very done so by point guys here is okay point here is okay if you these are very very common and useful day to day kind of utilities in programming world so python try to give you pre provided plus handy or plus they make it also simple also so the code look also simple and very clear to everyone that's what i'm talking about but if you have a question in your mind how they work behind the scene internally that is again one of my motto of this training not today when i explain you more deep about the python what is reference what is reference id how the managing the memory that point in time i will explain you internal of it how internally they are swapping the the values okay so right now i'm just giving you how to use it but if you are curious enough to know i will also give this answer to you in my next class <clears throat> okay this one point one more small thing right i want to tell you let's say i is a variable this value is let's say 2 j is a variable this value is 4 k is a variable this value may be 9 so rather than you create <coughs> this three variable in 
three different lines you can also write in this way i comma j comma k and the value will be 2 comma 4 comma 9 okay so multi multi variable you can assign in one single line also or multi variable you can print in one single line also sometimes it's very useful <coughs> to have this okay and one thing you guys know when i'm printing this technically because this is live interpreter here internally they are running the print function the right term or right way to print is this way okay so first i is 2 j is 4 and k is 9 they are printing so 2 will assign to first variable 4 will assign to second variable and 9 will be the third variable okay now this means let's say if you have one um, list with you having some value 2 5 7 9 this is the one list we have okay and sometimes there's a requirement come up all the value of the list or item of the list i want to assign different different variables okay so because we have four values so i can write one i comma j comma k comma p four variable giving and give your list name so what happened the first item of the list two will go in i second will j and last will be p, uh, p something like this okay see it i even though i can print it this way also in one single go every will thing will be sorry will be okay so this concept is sometimes very very useful okay and this concept is called unpacking so we are doing list unpacking so this is an entire list we have packed list one big list and we unpack this <coughs> and store in a different different variable so we can use uh, in some of the places where we are to use this particular values okay one more thing i want to tell you is again very interesting concept okay uh, for this i want to go to my command line first okay this is my python live interpreter in the black screen okay it's called python REPL also for example i have well variable called x and value let's say 5 plus 7 okay so 5 plus 7 become 12 is go to x we can give the value x interesting thing about python is whatever variable uh, or whatever output you print last okay this output also they store temporary in some temporary variable so that we can use somewhere okay and that special variable is called underscore see here underscore because sometime here we have x we can use x also in the future to get the 12 but sometime when we do some calculation for example 8 into 6 into 6 or 6 into 8 48 come up so this output this is a normal mathematics <coughs> And this is one expression we have of the mathematics and this output we haven't store anywhere but in the future if you want to call this output or use this output you can use underscore and they will give the last output but this underscore is only work for the last output that we have <coughs> maybe in the maybe i in this big expression i forget to add two now i can say underscore plus two see 50. so the last output would be i don't know i want to add two with this <coughs> okay and sometime sometime mostly some data coming from somewhere i don't know the last output but i want what a last output would be i want to send the mail i want to say i want to convert this data in encrypted way i want to add plus two in the last output so what a last output will come up i want to add two here <clears throat> same thing if you do here let's say four plus five okay if you underscore <clears throat> the output come up so this other guys one concept you can use either here or here same thing so what but it is only work for loss output for example <clears throat> after this if i say 6 into 6 okay 6 into 6 what is, is 6 to the power 2 okay or 6 into 6 into c 6 is 6 to power 3 now when you want to do any power you can use this symbol okay this symbol so you know this symbol uh, double symbol single symbol means multiply double means power so this is 6 to the power of 2 36 or 6 to the power of 3 2 1 6 okay so when when you want to multiply you can use asterisk you want to multiply you have to do power don't give us a space okay they give the error okay continue write the double asterisk they give you the power 
this will do. Sometimes we need it. But what the out last output would be? It's stored in this underscore. Okay, maybe I want to multiply one more time. Six, six to the power four kind of thing. Come on. So, so these are some of the useful utility. But underscore is sometimes very very interesting. But there's one more use case of underscore. Okay, is for example, this is my entire uh, DB. <clears throat> okay, in this DB, I have a lot of list of the mobile number we have. I want to do unpacking into I and J and K and P. I show you already. Okay, so all this value will store in I and other things, the DB values. So all the data of DB is stored in their respective values. But sometime, okay some of the value is not useful i don't want to use in the future i am only interested in five and seven and nine two i am not interested i can remove it in this case it won't work or they might work in a different way okay they fail you're doing unpacking okay and db you have to four value you have only three it won't work okay so if you have four items you need to give four items but if you go for item, i is an extra variable you have to create. And guys, when you create an extra variable, we'll talk a little bit more about memory of the RAM or space. They will unwanted consume extra space from the memory in the memory. And obviously space comes with some kind of price also. <clears throat> so what can we do in this kind of a requirement use case when you want to unpack it, I want to reuse the remaining data, but first data I don't need so I don't want to invest my memory to give any extra variable here. Okay. So again, you can use underscore here. Okay. In this case, it won't work. It, 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 it work and remaining value will be stored in this one. Comma, sorry. And if you look at underscore, the two. But it's because underscore temporary is keep on changing. So maybe after somebody use some, some other calculations, right then underscore will be all right so underscore won't take any unwanted extra memory it's a fixed memory python has given to this underscore okay so whenever you want to you know it is something like when you dump some data garbage some data not proper garbage but if you want to like like garbage dump uh, put the data in the trash you don't want to use it okay temporary you can use this symbol so this symbol is very much useful in most of the cases <clears throat> okay so that's what I'm looking for. Even though you can reuse this symbol multiple times. I don't want to do this value also. Okay. So only J and K will be useful and remaining part. What are the last will be will be updated. So at the number of unpacking, whatever data you're looking for to save your time and money, space, especially of the RAM, because data program is finally going to load on the RAM, more variable you have, more space you consume, more money you have to invest there at that point in time okay so so proper planning okay is is very important so this is the word good point to be useful <clears throat> okay so this is also one kind of capability they have now let's do <coughs> some more uh, some more thing here okay um, let's talk a little bit about uh, repetition right for example let's say i have x equals to five we have print x or maybe let me write simple code here print <coughs> hi okay and i want to run run this is one single statement or instructions we have but i want to run this code uh, run this code 10 times so simple i can copy 10 times 5 6 7 8 if it will go again node also 7 8 9 and 10 okay type then run it 10 times the print okay the point here is right if you think one particular code one single line or 10 maybe line okay if you want to run again and again okay maybe have some requirement okay so this is called repeatable code you want to repeat it okay and if you want to repeat any code again and again so almost in any of the programming language <clears throat> in almost in any of the programming language okay we have two different way so if you want to repeat your code again and again either you type by yourself the way I type you here uh, type here is but if you type it take a lot of time okay if i ask you to type run one billion time it take maybe days 
for years to write okay and i don't want this that is the reason we have the computers right because i will tell the computer what to do what to perform and i will tell how many time you have to do it okay means how many time you have to repeat it so if you want to repeat something so in any of the programming language there is two way to repeat your that portion of the code or that is called that block of code okay one way is called iteration to repeat your code okay maybe some comma i show you multiple example in a minute in, in some minute and one way is called recursion okay so iteration means if you guys know by chance anything like for loop or while loop while loop so repetition thing like a loop i want to run it again and again this called repetition means loop so for loop while is very common things recursion is when you to use a function and functions so this topic guys is very very powerful important topic in upcoming discussion when i explain you first functions then i explain you what is recursion so i'm not taking this point but there's two way to repeat your code or loop your code means keep running this code again and again one of the very simple so first in way is iteration where we use for and the while so let me so explain you what is for loop first for is a way to iterate means to keep on running the code okay so for example <coughs> for example uh, uh let me take this example better example here okay so i would like to i have my uh, list of the variables let's say uh, 1 2 3 4 okay and what i want to do i want to go to first item and print it then go to next item and print it then go to next item and print it then go to next item <coughs> let's say then print it then go to next item and print it and because there is no item afterwards okay so there is no index number 6 available so the index out of range so they give the fail they give the error okay but right now guys what we are doing here and what i'm trying to do here is i go to every item one by one and try to print it and use it so these are the data i want to print use send the mail send the sms send the whatsapp right whatever you want to use that will be your case or your choice but point here is i want to pick first data and use it sec pick second data and use it okay so this concept is again what called loop okay this is loop what we are doing here we are keep on repeating something and here repetition would be i want to pick this data and I want to use it and then i pick this data then i want to use it i want to pick this data i want to use it same thing if you want to do again and again same exact same thing pick the data use it pick the data use it pick the data use it okay then this is called repetition or this is called loop and for doing this kind of loop here in the python for loop is so powerful we can do with while loop also i'll show you how but for loop is so powerful for loop here guys in this kind of example what i'm showing you right now for loop makes the things very very simple <clears throat> okay so how we can write the for loop here is okay we can type the for loop something like this say for do one thing go inside db variable <coughs> db variable okay and pick first data and use it but for using this is data and data guys okay whenever guys if you want to use any data in the programming world okay if you want to use you want to use any data in the programming world right you to always store the data in one variable then only you can use the data in the remaining code without storing the data in the variable how you going to use it in the future okay that is also one of the use of the variable if you want to use any data again and again or maybe one time in the future you to first keep the data in one variable that's what i'm going to do here and say for loop do one thing pick the first data from this variable okay and store in one variable let's say i okay then what to do with i guys what is colon here i am explaining in one minute but what is i here i is a single variable you can give any variable name okay what is i contain you contain your first data okay let's say i want to just just want to print i so this is what i'm want to do with that <clears throat> then 
the powerful thing of the for loop is after they perform something on this data then again they go to this variable for db they go to second position pick this data store an i then, then we do something with the i then go again say third position they pick the data store an i then we do something with the i same thing they repeat again again who is repeating for loop where they repeating on your list operator and the beautiful thing about the for loop is they are very smart they know sixth is the last data after six there is no index available so for loop auto will stop so that there will be no unwanted error come up okay because normally guys when you you when you have any error in most of the cases your entire program crash is not crashing right now but most of the cases okay your program will crash so how to handle this error we have again discussion in the future called exception handling but for loop is very smart they say i know after sixth index fifth index we have no data so i don't asking you to get the next data i know when to stop i will stop for you you don't have to worry about okay it means if i run this code you see entire data will come up but why this data come in this way because we print i did now your choice you want to print you want to do something else maybe in my case i want to multiply 1 with i with i okay so i will pick first data and i want to multiply to take a power of it make it bigger double or what do we want to do that would be your choice okay so point here is uh, point here is if you want if you have a lot of data list of me list of phone number for example we already have one variable called email we already created right somewhere email is a one variable so let me use this email variable okay so email is a one variable we already created a list and what i'm looking for i'm looking for i want to go in in a one keyword here i told you guys if you want to go in somewhere to do something in is a keyword go inside the string go inside the for example you know this example i show you as is a string and you go in this string and check does linux is there or not and we can use here okay even though we have email let's say db is a one list i want to check in this db in the six is available true does in this list in seven available no so this also we can do right we can check this this id available this phone number available this name available okay something like that so in is a very powerful keyword you can help in searching also but in can be used with for loop to go inside pick the data and do something with the for okay for example in this email address i want to check does email address p at the rate k.com available in this email false it's not there okay p dot key dot com it should be available because they have some extra space here guys here they look here exactly so if i give the space here my son we had a space yeah true <coughs> available okay but <coughs> if you requirement something like this what do you want to do i want to pick first email do something pick second email do something pick third email do something so i can say because this is look like a repetition and whenever you to repeat you can call for loop and you have to very specify for loop do one thing go in this list pick first value because if you want to repeat something you do always do one by one right i will first pick one email then send the mail pick second email send the mail pick third email send the mail something like this okay <clears throat> so i will do one by one i pick first email is stored in some temporary variable let's say e we can give any name then we we'll call what is called i have not explained to you yet i will explain you in a minute okay then i do something with it right now i'm just printing but in your case okay here you can write some email functions okay you can write email function that is available in the python that will send the mail to from with body with subject like this so i take this as a homework from my side if you want i will show you the output also in the future classes but take as a homework from my side okay how to use python to send the emails okay so in python we have email functions available okay so try to do from yourself otherwise my upcoming classes i will show you this answer to you <clears throat> okay so uh, try it and if you find this answer try it manually then put over here this function so what happened 
if you have thousands of email address okay run the whole loop and they will send the email you know like in market where bulk email service is available so they are doing something like this only okay they are, they have bulk email we we put in their list okay and they send the email one by one by some kind of whole loop but i know i'm not writing this this is not the perfect code you know this one but i know i'm just printing this so they pick first print second first second third all the things till then they stop okay this is our point <coughs> now in this case in this case my requirement is the way i explained guys in some some before this break my requirement is i only want to send a mail to gmail id only so for loop is the one who pick first email send and do something they pick second email then do something but before they do something i want to send the mail only the id who as the domain called gmail.com or email id belong to gmail.com okay so so if i see here see here what i'm looking for just try to don't don't understand with the respect to programming perspective okay try to understand with a way we we as a human being work right means okay what we looking for we have collected lot of email id from our customers we have a list of email ids okay and somebody has given you a requirement that you have to send a mail to all the email ids okay let's say all means they nobody talking about any of the condition we have no condition we are not biased we are not condition i want to send to all okay all means pick first one send them mail pick sec first second one send them mail pick third one send them mail so is what i created here already here i by some printing but we can send the mail also it's a print function we can use mail function okay but as soon as somebody change their statement they say this is a list of the customer we have and and here i want to send the mail but my condition is not all my condition is even though initially we have done had any condition but now we have a condition my condition is only i want to send to gmail.com id is only okay because this is how we work in the real world right this is what what the statement we normally create or we ask to do so whenever anybody say we have some condition certain condition you have this rule you have to follow this policy if just do this do that if you don't do this then this will happen okay so guys this is known as conditions in a programming world okay idea is simple guys the programming language created for the human being in such a way the whatever activity we do as a human being in the real life same activity you ask your program to do okay the same way is same logic there will be no different logic going to come up what do you do in your real life exactly same way you have to do it only syntax will be different we don't say in the real world for e i email call and print okay the syntax is different but use requirement use case is same it that is is a reason guys what i'm trying to tell you here is whenever any requirement come up try to think like a human being if, but it is what if i have to do what to do what what i do that point in time and then you come to know what you will do if somebody say just go to all the list and <clears throat> and uh, whenever you find email at gmail id then do something so what uh, it come in your mind it means i have to first go to first email id check this email uh, gmail i go to next check this gmail i go to next is gmail so it means i have to go to all the names same way first go then do something first second go then go third go then do something it means i have to use for loop only but with for loop i have to do one more thing is called conditions because i have to check also okay and guys if you want to do condition in any programming language mostly we use if or else if or else okay so that's what i'm going to explain you first how we can create if or else and with the if or else guys i will explain you this syntax and because in the python code the we we write any block of code if as for functions classes we have one syntax here <coughs> in the python so let me explain to first that syntax okay then we i will explain you more about for and if else but guys by this screen i am just trying to tell you don't treat programming language as a pure typical programming language okay as a code just 
understand the requirement think like a human being draw the uh, idea how you going to perform by yourself manually and same idea convert step by step step by step in the programming world <clears throat> their respective keyword like for or if something like this <clears throat> before i explain it further in this example i am just want to pose this example for some minute okay what i'm looking for i want to send a mail only to gmail ids this is my requirement okay or let's take better example here i can so i can perform you right now let's say i have a list of phone number and i want to send a whatsapp to phone number let's say this is my requirement so i am going to show you code in the python how you can send the whatsapp from the python code i will know how to do whatsapp from a mobile phone okay or maybe from desktop web app but how can you uh, whatsapp with the python that is the one example i am going to explain you in 10 10 20 minutes but before this let me explain you first if or else in some of the basic syntax of the python <clears throat> okay so let me start from here let's say uh, let's forget for some time for this example let's say we have some requirement okay requirement would be something like this my requirement would be um, uh, let's say in my company uh, uh, we have hr department hrt department we have some hr manager who is helping us you in to recruit new persons okay and you know upon that particular role perspective okay the particular role perspective they have uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, they have something in the mind that for, for this role they give that much salary let's say you come for the job interview let's say my me i come to a job interview and i have something in my mind okay mind is if this hr department will offer me a salary for example and if salary is less than 10k or let's say 10 then i don't join this job otherwise if salary is more than 10 i will join the job so this is what i have in my mind you see here if you see very closely you know what i have if they offer me salary okay let me let me write over here <clears throat> okay so what they have in mind in my code okay if they offer me salary more than 10k then i will join job otherwise i don't join okay this is what going on in your mind in your mind this is what guys you have decided okay this is your your condition i can say okay so what happen you come to this job and ask to the hr department uh, how much how much they are offering okay let's say they say 5000 or 5 as soon as they give the input 5 then you use your mind and say no i am looking for minimum 10 equal to 10 but this would what they are offering it is not based on my condition in this case i will i otherwise i don't want i i say i want join but they say this company is other company said they are giving 15k so now it's based on condition this is what you're looking for your condition match what you looking for that true then you will join the job so in this kind of context guys this is what how we talk how we how we see how we plan the thing if you this kind of thing in your mind then this can be converted <clears throat> this story can be converted into the code okay and this story is mostly related to conditions and how we convert the code so this would be your variable this is your data somebody is giving the input let's i'm filling right now manually okay and this condition over here if they offer me salary more than so more than can be written this simple or maybe more than equals to maybe for example and how how much they are offering right now okay they are offering this much so this we are going to variable this variable is the one who know how much they are offering this much 
okay then i will join the job okay or maybe i'll join the job i will shift to the city i will book <coughs> uh, you know room something like this so multiple thing you'll do only if they offer me this one okay and because you can do multiple thing only if the condition match so that is reason so then we nominate cultivators or something like this so you will join the job join the job only if the condition match and then only you do all the things so this would be your one two three three things you will do and do or three steps you do or i can say this is the block of code so is a block of the code of if if the condition match then this block of code gonna run otherwise if this condition doesn't match i will say else then i will i like to say no or i will say i will send email to say no big no and then block of code okay so this is the way typical syntax of any programming language in the world normally we write in this way also okay where this is known as condition and that condition always give you output true or false you will never say see any other output see in the real world also when you type any condition if the 5 is greater than 2 the condition true this 5 is equals to 5 is equal to condition this 5 is less than 10 is less than condition this 5 is less than equals to 9 is less than equal to condition this 5 is not equals to 9 True, you know, they don't occur. So they are the different conditions, and condition guys always give the answer either true or false. If the five is greater than ten, false, they're not. Of true and false is like a boolean variables or boolean data type. Okay, so what I'm talking about, I'm talking about condition always give true or false, and if is only looking for true or false. Hey guys, this is how we work, right? In the condition, I say I will do if you do something. So if you do something is either true or false, then only you will do. So if is a one keyword or like you can think if is like one kind of one kind of uh, function in any of the programming language who will take the input either true or false. And normally this input we always take from the conditions. If this condition true, or if they get the true as input, then they run their block of code. If they get this input false, then they don't run this block of code. They go to else and then they run this block of code. Okay, and because right now this is like a string, so the programming perspective, I am just printing this just to show you the output. Let me remove this line over here. So guys, this is very common typical syntax in any other programming world, but in the Python, this is not the syntax we have to use. Concept is same, almost the block of code we draw is the same, but in the Python, the syntax is a little bit different. In the Python, we don't write this curly brace. so in any of the keyword okay where you have to write a block of code like if while loop for else functions okay these are the things where you have to write a lot of block of code in that particular keyword but in the python we don't have to write curly braces to tell this is the block of code we don't have to write curly braces in the python okay it means if the if have more block of code is very common thing we might have multiple block of code i will join the job i will book room right or other other things also okay uh so in the python we don't write any block of code so but so how python recognize that <clears throat> the three line is the block of code of python for example maybe this code maybe look like this so how python recognize that from here till here is my block of code if my condition true then only this three lines should be run if condition false then i will move to this else but in python we don't write any any curly braces to uh, as i write a block of code or suite of code how they know <coughs> how they know uh, where the block of code start and the close and for this in the python we have to use a concept called spacing here okay the block of code of python should be given some extra space and this space is known as indentation indent okay by the space they recognize okay recognize all the three statements a block of code of if or this is a paragraph part of the if okay
okay it means if if condition run, they will run, run their all the three lines of code if condition doesn't match then they move to the else but i also have multiple lines of code again the same syntax you have to use here we will give some extra space how much space you should give you it will be up to you you can give at least minimum one space you require otherwise give they give the error it's a compulsory part in the python okay so if you don't give a space they give the indentation error code will fail so now dear so you will give one space standard in the market is four space but normally i practice i always use tab because i this make my code very quickly indent and also give a better look okay of this code so i normally give tab to to give the space but giving this space is compulsory otherwise code will fail okay this is one thing second thing in the python okay in in the for if condition has some more uh, cases you will see we don't have to use parenthesis even though if you use parenthesis it doesn't matter they won't give the error but you don't have to use parenthesis that also it will work okay second thing is okay second thing is in most of the cases we can also write a code in this way also so if you have only one single statement in the block of code rather than give to write in the next line and give some space you can also write in this way also this also the valid syntax in the python that is a one of the reason why after this keyword after if keyword you have to write colon to separate till here we have main keyword after this we have block of code so that is then we have to write over here so any keyword that has a block of code from for to while loop to functions to classes anything you're going to see in the future this is the syntax uh, of the python okay otherwise concept wise they are same what we see in other <coughs> examples so the code has been completed now let me run this code okay so let me run this code uh, for this i go to my command prompt again i go to my document folder where my python code lies this is a code i have this file i write the code and if I, the code is there in the file directly or text file directly you can write with this line i guess here i will book the jo job and all the things why this output come up because my company is offering me 15k and i say if, if salary is more than 10 if the condition is true and if the if get the true they happy at their and their block of code but if company is offering 5 let me save the file and they say i want join the job because this condition falls and they go to else and they run it okay something like this but in the code if you give some extra space anywhere so guys again this space should be always common i mean it means equal if any of the block of code have some extra space extra or less okay they will fail okay, they say they say code is not properly formatted we are confused we it look like now this is a block of code of this keyword okay so we are, we confuse and here we give this error indent as an error at this line line number 8 around we have this unexpected indent just go and check and properly format it <coughs> okay that was the syntax <coughs> you have to follow okay now it is working fine okay so guys this is the common syntax everywhere you you have to use even though if you see in the for loop also now if you see okay so for loop is a loop this one got some kind of condition we write in the for loop after this we say for loop close here okay so we have used colon same way explain to you after colon we write a block of code of the for loop block of code of the for loop okay and we have to give extend it here if you had one more line we will give one more indent here okay but this indent so we came if you give less or more they fail we need to give equal <coughs> but here when I mean, they fail because one has no meaning here let me uh, write print one more time okay two times they print it but this will be equal so same syntax everywhere so indentation in the python is simple and uh, why they do this because uh, guido when rosam he is the you know creator of the python language he said in some of the blog okay the the idea is it is good practice whenever you write a code is good practice if this is a block of code okay all the block of code should be extra space so that readability of the code will be increased 
more the better the readability of the code is better anybody can understand your code in the future if somebody else also read your code as a team member they can read very quickly easily so to make the code readable so that they can understand logic very fastly if one of them want to change or debug they can do it very fast <clears throat> so this is better practice always in a block give the code readable or maybe you have sometime if inside if nested so so it's something like this maybe if i write something one minute join i can add one more code here if then i say five is greater than two then i can write print <coughs> okay for example okay so it look very clear it look like that if these are the block of this main if and now this is the block of this if okay maybe in this if i have one more code so look like now this two part is only part of this block so if you properly give the intent readability of the code will increase it will help you to understand and debug the code very easily but this practice <coughs> is been given mostly to all the software engineer but we as a software engineers while writing the code we are in a, in a different mindset we keep on typing the concept and do it and we don't follow the good code practice okay good pro code practice would be is one this one is called properly give the look and feel or format the code if you don't follow this and finally you finally your code will land it like this sometimes you write here sometimes you write here sometimes you write here it look very awkward very hard to understand where something start where thing goes very hard to understand so how you going to debug and add more thing here that is a one of the reason why they make the indentation part very strict in the python if you don't write indent for example in this code is look like this okay we fail do not allow it so you have to pack, make it practice right practice your code should be proper indent then only i will run this code otherwise i won't run now why the failing here because i do curly braces here just to explain you okay that's all so there's a what guys one of the reason why guido g u i d o when draw some uh, uh, explain and this is a good idea so you know guys when you see the python code finally what you realize after writing a lot of powerful code even though in future class we write going to write multiple powerful code long code you see automatic code naturally becomes so clean look very clear sophisticated clean code okay so it will increase your readability of the code that is the one idea okay and guys this is about if and else condition one small thing i want to tell you about here is just to extra knowledge let me type here okay if is the one they are looking for the conditions for example 5 is greater than 2 is a one conditions true if say whatever you write i will always check the condition okay if condition true i will run my block of code else i will send to my else block of code that's a not okay this is <coughs> greater with the print this but technically in other way you know what if is saying i am not looking for condition technically if say i am looking for boolean only that's what so whatever you type here this is this guy this is the perfect way to say whatever type here i am looking for the boolean input either true or false if it's true i will run this if it's false false i will run this okay so technically what i'm trying to tell you here is whatever you write here okay finally they give me output either false and true accordingly i take the decision <clears throat> this false then i will run this and this is very powerful way to understand this concept so a lot of guys feel and know and think if is looking for the condition if is not looking for the condition <clears throat> if is only looking for boolean boolean means true or false yes or no or on or off or zero or one <clears throat> okay if you know this so lots of powerful uh, you know in interesting powerful code you can design <clears throat> Okay, I'm just giving you one exa very basic example here. Okay, let's say I'm giving this as a homework to you. 
means you can just give me a, a, just think right now for for a minute okay let's say i am going to write a code if okay then <clears throat> then i am going to print here linux space else i am going to print world here okay so let's say this is the example i have it is been let's say asked in by in some interview question now the the question that is been asked is okay what you write here what condition you write here so your final output would be linux world so i am giving this question to you right now in a minute i am going to give you a solution for this so that i can move forward you don't have to give, give the answer to us you just type by yourself think by yourself a question is what you type here you type false you type you know something like this greater than less than equals to what else i don't know that's what the homework is with that what the task is what you type here okay let me give a question mark what you type here okay so your final output would be linux world so this is one task just try it guys quickly i'm just giving 30 seconds or think it quickly okay then i give the answer and this answer will give you a more clarity the power of if okay just like 30 seconds so let me explain you okay so technically understand one thing in the if or else world that you guys know or you might might don't know maybe okay at one point in time either this block of code will run or this block of code will run if this part is true then if block of code is run if this part is false then else block of code is run but at one point in time technically you can't run both the block of code so it it, it means it means if you want to print linux world as output it won't work in this way you can't print this and this both because this belong to if this belong to else so now here we can use we can use some trick here okay trick here what trick let me explain to you Because whenever guys, uh, if you talk about any string or if you talk about any number, okay. Right now this is string data type. This is number integer data type. Okay, but there's one function called boolean function. Okay, if you type any string in the boolean, okay, they will make it true. So what boolean say? Boolean say I'm true or false. anything that is exist okay we for us it is true or truth is hello it may be my name it is a true for me if i if you use a boolean it try to convert any data into boolean for me it's true okay similarly if you ask boolean to talk any number make okay, it true it talk any number true okay but in the boolean If you type zero, only this number they for intentionally they make it false. Okay. Otherwise, if you recall any of the number, string, data, decimal, for the boolean perspective, they might they make that number is true. That's the one point. <clears throat> one more point, guys. Here is there's one concept gonna come up in the future. I don't want to explain you right now, but when I explain you the function concept, let let's say print is a one function. If I say print high, they get the high. Okay, print is printing this message on the screen. Uh, printing is different thing, but if this function is returning is different thing. This function is not returning anything. Okay, what I mean by return, I don't want to explain you. Maybe in the next class tomorrow when I start a function, I will explain you. 
print on the screen or written okay and because this function is not returning not returning what i remember written we will discuss tomorrow class okay so in this case if i say boolean can you take the boolean of this so this line will print something is print on the screen but they are not returning so for the boolean perspective they are false false if you want to make the bool this line true then we can use not keyword not means if anything false they become true for example this is true but if you want to make it false we can use not keyword not keyword make it false like a, a reverse same thing this line say boolean true but we make it false make it true so this line what they're doing you uh, for you this is a function we have by some this function is printing but this function can can be your database connectivity this kind of function may be sending the mail this function may be sending the whatsapp messages it would be anything okay and what a function will return you boolean will take that which is true or the false it means this line give you either true or false and that's what guys we are looking for here if always need either true or false either you type directly either you write type 5 greater than 2 or you can directly type this way also this also okay it means if i run this code if we'll first run this code first and check what they giving you so in this example they are giving you true and because they are giving you true so this block of line code will run But because because they are running this code and this code will function for sending the mail for sending whatsapp to check the database connectivity or printing so what a function right here they will perform first it means the final output would be high then linux world here high and then linux world okay now based on this concept very powerful concept but based on this concept now what a task i given to you can perform i am looking for uh, for printing linux world so let me copy this code so you have extra copy for this okay so here is to high i can write linux space okay so this line always runs so linux will always print then i want to print world and when the world print when else run and when the else run when they give the false and when they give the false when i type don't type not so in this context you will get the linux world technically this line is not running but my question was very clear what i write here at the question mark side what i write here in the question mark or i fill in the blank so you will get the output in linux world that what we have achieved linux world but intention to ask this question some of the entity has seen they ask you but but the main intention to explain this concept is if is not looking for the conditions mostly in any of the lab programming language if is looking for true or false however you give true or false that's okay for the if and if you understand this power then here we can use any of the function and capabilities that will do something for you okay i say just go and connect database when database connect then only i send the message database connected send the mail when mail, mail sent successful then i send the mail sent okay so this is how you can lots of uh, interesting powerful code you can design one small thing is if you looking for linux will come in the same line okay so there is one small thing we can do here by chance if you see the print as a function in the python right when you print something print will print the string and automatically after this they give a new line new line why okay so for this let me explain you one small thing this is the one string we have this is linux world hello something like this so this is a sequence of string and guys in the sequence of string somewhere in the between if you want to break something or escape or something it's called uh, escape sequence what i mean by this i want after a world i want the string will break and remaining part will escape to the new line so we can we use one symbol called backslash n okay so this symbol is called escape sequence 
when this symbol come up yeah, if you write only type n they think n is a normal character they print n as a normal character okay but <clears throat> but if you write this symbol so this symbol means this is the escape sequence and n has a special meaning and the meaning of n is called new line okay in this case if you try to print s what you will find okay this line is a, is a one sequence of a string and because of this symbol we escape this sequence and after this we have new line then next word come up so backslash n is a escape sequence for new line similarly we have backslash t is the escape sequence means give the extra thing in the string is just for tab like this we have multiple escape sequence we have okay so this is what the guys commonly everywhere available in any other programming language okay so what i'm trying to tell you here is if you talk a print function okay print function guys behind the scene okay print function behind the scene okay say whenever you print any string after string i will run one escape sequence for you that's called backslash n okay where it written inside the print they have one keyword so after comma there's one keyword called and and the value of and is by default is backslash n what i mean by this we can see from here that makes more sense if you see print is a function guys and i show you how to take the help if you use shift tab in the print we can give the value to print but after the value they have one internal keywords for multiple purpose uh, what they have multi powerful things we'll see more about it but one of the keyword they have is called and equals to backslash n or they have the byte of value and means and is one keyword in the print that tell print after you print i will do something what i'll do i will do this part okay so it it means if you print hss after this i will give new line okay but but if you don't want to have new line then change this value by default if you type this or don't type this by default they give new line only but let's say i go show me a command line to make it more clear but let's say after hss i want to print dot 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 see it after this line print instead of new line now we have dot 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 or what can we do i don't want to do anything so after this line print they don't do anything and automatic next repl come okay so print is a function every function come up with or you can create the, your own parameter what is parameter we will discuss in tomorrow class when we talk about function but this is the one parameter they have that's controlling some of the behavior print but we can change it and that is all going to happening over here okay so when you print here they print the next word and automatically they give new line and because they give new line that is a new line come up here and there is so because they are printing so here i can say print i don't want any new line so print linux then space don't give new line here and because you don't give new line here so next print will print in the same sequence so here linux will print in the same line so these are some powerful control we can do it very quickly in the python okay so i explain guys what is a block of uh, indentation here is a very co core concept of the python you should know otherwise the code won't work now based on this if concept and based on this for loop concept i think i now you understand for loop syntax also okay so, so here this is a block of code we indent okay and and because this is a block of code for st start close here so we had column and why we have column because there's only one single block of code so we can write our code in this way also if you have one single block of code if you have same output gonna come okay now based on this entire concept okay let very quickly create this code the code will be something like this i have the list of emails okay what i'm looking for i'm looking for only print the email that has email id gmail so as a for go inside my all the emails pick first email put let's say in e okay then i will write my block of code 
then what to do with e let's say i want to print e right now this word testing i will print it but my plan here i don't want to print everybody i want to print only those who are gmail so now here we have a condition after you pick first check the condition after pick second check the condition it means after for loop start then we have to check the condition okay and if the condition true then only we will print okay and one more small thing guys it is not compulsory to write else right if you don't want to use write else don't write so idea will be something if condition true then we will do something if the condition false i don't want to do something okay so there is no requirement else so i don't know here so if the condition true then only i want to print if condition false if email id is not gmail i don't want to do anything because i don't want to do anything so there is no requirement of else so something like this i want here in this case right now my code is not complete again somehow same output come up why same come up for loop go to this email pick first one put in e they will go check the condition if this true means always true will ask if the will always true and because you are true they will go inside if always and they print everybody <clears throat> but this is not i wanted my condition is not always true i want to do something what i want to do something e is containing my email id is at this point in time and every email id is like a string so what i want to do i say e your string okay and the string can tell me all the function you support okay so you do support a function called let's say and width there are going to already explain you guys in in some time back right and width function okay so in this string there's a one email id okay if this email id is and width at the rate gmail.com okay then what you give me true i saw you already and if you give it true it will be happy then it will take me inside the code at that point in time what is e would be email id would be so on so on guys so guys they showing me only the gmail ids so normally guys we have a lot of data sometimes you have to filter the data we have to only looking for some part of it okay so this is a good code we have depend upon how you filter and with or some other things also we can write so when you guys become more comfortable with regular expression regex more powerful uh, way to searching some part of the data but code syntax will be something like this <clears throat> it will be different okay so this is a uh, one idea now let's create one more code and this code what this code will do this code will uh, will send the whatsapp messages and this will be last code we have a lot of logics to be covered but the remaining part we'll cover tomorrow but let's cover one very quick uh, example here okay i have a list of mobile numbers mobile numbers okay based upon the cities and the countries so let's say one of mobile number i have um, plus 91 9821 as i'm i'm guys putting some random number somebody name name match it is just a pure random no plant pure plant so <clears throat> this is a different mobile number i have okay so let's say this mobile number belong to different different country 97 uh, this belongs to 92 some some number this belong to 91 india this belong to 94 uh, okay and india i'm just putting this number intentionally one of my team member so sometime guys if you face if you belong to has 13 or if you face any challenge in terms of management the, this will be a number through which you can connect even though i don't know this number let me check this number very quickly okay so this number would be would be what one minute where it is so i'm typing it because i want to show you messages that will <coughs> uh, yeah, here it is uh, 8306453222 so this is one of our team member number and this number start with 91 code is a india code <coughs> okay so this is a list we have 
I what I want to looking uh, want to do here. I want to send the WhatsApp messages. My condition here is, I want to send WhatsApp messages only to Indian numbers. Okay. So how I do? Simple for loop. I say go inside these mobile numbers. Pick first mobile and store. Let's say store in the mobile variable. Okay, here's different variable name. This mobiles and mobile. Oh, technically look like this is contain lot of mobiles. That's what I have. And this contain only one mobile number. That's what for loop will do. Because for loop will pick first mobile number at one point in time. Only one single mobile we will have. Okay, let's so guys, let's check the code very quickly. I think working fine till here. Yeah, all the mobile number come up. Now plan here is I don't want to print all. I say if. Okay, mobile is again one kind of string we have here. You see a string. In this string, we have multiple functions available. Okay. One of the function would be start with, you know, like end with. Same thing we have to start with. So what a start will do for you? They will check the start of the of prefix. Okay, so I say if number start from plus nine one. Okay, if number start from plus nine, we start with. Then tell the true, and if they say true, if will print use this number. See here, only this number come. <clears throat> so till here nothing very technical code. Now I want to send the WhatsApp message to this guy. How we can set? So understand one thing, guys. Python give you lots of keyword like for if start with function swap concept uh, slicing operator. So all the basic typical programming concept that we use most in all the programming world, Python or any other language give to you. <clears throat> But apart from this. If you want to integrate or you use Python for do something else, for example, you want to uh, connect Python to connect with AWS cloud, or you want to do something in machine learning, you want to do something in IoT world, you want to do something in quantum computers, or you want to connect with WhatsApp, Twitter, Insta, Facebook, SMS, email. <clears throat> okay, so from the Python, if you want to do something. To with any of these tools or the technology, that's not part of Python. Okay, you can do it. How? For this, for this, you have to connect Python with this tool or with these technologies. And to with connect with any of tools and the technology, or you have to utilize Python to work on these technologies. Python has one extra kind of plugins, and this plugin typically known as libraries. So we have the library available for this. Okay, so it is you can think library make the Python uh, more powerful. You can think Python is like a mobile phone. Mobile phone come with very basic apps. Okay, so this mobile phone is like a Python as a analogy you can think. But from the mobile phone, you want to do something else that is not available in the mobile phone. What do you do? You install the app. More app you have, more features you will you will have in your mobile phone. So if you think guys, this app is like your library. So this is guys one concept analogy you can think of here to to understand this particular concept. Okay, so Python library give the give make the Python give more facility, give the Python more extension, give more power feature to do something else. Okay. So whatever you have used till now, it is a core capabilities of Python. I mean, core means it is available internally, internally inside the Python. But apart from this, if you need extra, so a lot of companies, third-party companies have created libraries for you. Okay, like in the you know Android iPhones, you have multiple apps created by different companies and other things. Same way. Multiple different community, open source guys, different companies, created lab, different different libraries for you. <clears throat> okay, some of the library name just for knowledge. I told you in today's class when we started the class today. I don't know. Let me check the screen if I have. Okay, some somewhere I told you this entire list. So multiple different technologies. We have multiple. I don't know where the screen would be. Not doesn't matter, but okay, we have. So, why I've explained to you, Python doesn't does not know how to contact to WhatsApp, but we have a library available. 
through which we can extend the capability of the python by this python come to know how to use this how to connect with whatsapp to send the whatsapp messages okay this is one thing so what library you have to install so if you search in the google and ask which library to use for aws cloud or which library to use for um, uh, for um, uh, sms or email or or machine learning or iot you can get a lot of document for this but right now the library name that is uh, we are going to use here that will help python to to send the whatsapp messages the name of the library is called pi what kit this is the name of the library created by somebody okay but this library you have to install it for example in the mobile phone you install the app from your play store similarly in the python if you want to install the library then we have a command called pip okay but if you install the python with anaconda then we have one more command called conda so you can use conda pip anything whatever you feel like i am going to use pip here okay so we can use pip command to install it and for running the pip command you have to go to a command line or command terminal <coughs> and say pip i want to install the library called pi what kit <clears throat> okay in my case it is already there installed so they th this line run very quickly okay but in your case it takes some one or two minutes maybe to install this thing when you hit enter they will download something and install for you okay so this library has been installed you can think of this library like a mobile phone app just to make the thing uh, understandable <clears throat> okay now let's move forward now we have the library installed now what to do <clears throat> every library every library okay when installed give a modules to us okay what is module <clears throat> okay what is module here Uh, very very then why is one dedicated class on module guys in the future gonna come up okay but very quickly if i try to explain you module in one one minute so you guys know uh, in any programming language let me use the word pl programming language whatever you do behind the scene they are running the function only again what is function we have a dedicated class coming tomorrow for example For example, print is a function. Even though if is also function, even though for is also function, even though equality is also one kind of function behind this. I can prove you in, in maybe in future. Whatever you do, everything is a function. Okay, everything function. And normally, normally every function will do something. For one function will print something. One function will. send email one side will send sms one side will assign a value in the ram okay and mostly all this function will put in one big file okay and this file is known as module module okay so module is what is like a big file of one program inside this program we have multiple functions available very rough definition this is but we have dedicated class on uh, cl dedicated class on function module where you have more uh, clarity i'm just giving you very quick example before i go for whatsapp example okay for example i'm showing from a command line okay for example this is my command line okay and this is my operating system windows and guys this example is very important for the admins linux admin windows admin right who want to create the scripts <coughs> Every operating system has their own commands. For example, echo hi is one command in Windows. Same command run in Linux also. Okay, or there is one command called uh, called uh, cal calendar. This command is not running in Windows, but this command can run in Linux or Mac also to see the calendar of this month. So every OS has their own command. Command to install software. Command to create directory. Command to create the file. Every OS has their own commands. For example, in my Windows, I have a command called Chrome. What this will do? It will it will 
open a Chrome browser or Chrome browser open, then we'll open the new tab for me. Or in this command, I can type my HTTP colon www that Google google.com so they will open the tab with google.com see here google.com they open okay so chrome we have so in my windows i have the chrome command by chance if this command is not running in your windows either you don't have the chrome browser or if you have a chrome browser your path is not set okay what i mean by this i'm just giving you about a minute extra knowledge because most of the time this command not work so you guys have a query so normally guys in a windows wherever chrome is stored and that folder you have to set the path path means so that you can run the command from the command line so how to find the path so in a chrome browser if you do right click in a chrome browser right click and there's options to properties okay and here guys this is the target where the chrome browser is stored so this chrome program install in this folder whichever folder they stored copy this path okay and then in your operating system set the path this is called environmental variable search so env in your windows okay hit enter go to environmental variables okay in system variable there's an option called path edit this and add here new in my case, I already added here, if you see somewhere, somewhere here it is, this one. So technically what I'm trying to do here is, I'm telling my windows that this is the folder where my Chrome has been installed. I'm giving this information to you so that Chrome application or Chrome command or program I can run from a command line. That's called setting the path. So this is what I've done in my, my system. Nothing so much related to Python, but if you tried this practical what I'm doing right now, so you won't, I don't want you to face any issue. Then save it and close it. Then close your terminal, open a new terminal. And in the new terminal, when you type this, Chrome command will work. So every operation has their own personal commands. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And if you want to run any command from the Python, Python has the capability to run the commands. <clears throat> How? So in the Python, we have a function called system function. First of all, guys, if you try to run any command from the Python directly here, it won't work. The fail, it won't work. Okay, that thing is a string. But to tell Python this is not the string, it is not the variable, it is a command of my base operating system where the Python is running right now. Okay, so for this, you have system function available. So, system is a fun function, very interesting, very useful. By this function, we can tell my python the contact to your underlying operating system where you're running right now in my case windows and find this command if the command is available in the path that i always set okay then most of you guys command always they set in the in the path if you especially use linux and mac okay if they're in the path run it okay see here they they run it for us and they launch it <coughs> system function okay but one thing guys, by chance in my current version, system function running directly, but little bit older version of the Python system function doesn't run, work. Why? Because system function is a, just a function. Okay. And function is always the part of the module. To run this function, you have to first use this module of this call. If you want to run any function, the function will do something for you here. If you want to run the command, you have to first load the module. And for loading the module, you have to import it. But don't worry about function, module, import. We have a detailed discussion for very basic tomorrow class. But here, right now they're working fine in my case because this latest version they have already inbuilt. But most of the cases, we have to first import the module called OS. And this function is always the part of OS module. We write something like OS dot means this is a function we run the command but this function come from this big file that's called module so we have to write like this so this is a better way to do it okay but so don't confuse by this line let's say forget about this line okay so typically every function always belongs to 
one of the module okay even though a lot of function we directly use also they are called build in modules so build in functions so python give you by default to you build in what a build in we will discuss again okay so uh, so typically just uh, the, the the point here is if you want to run any outside world function this function always come from module we have to first load the module a module always come from the library so this is a sequence okay so why i'm explaining this point to you because i want to show you one pattern of whatsapp but otherwise function module library will talk more about it in my tomorrow class <clears throat> okay so in my case my my our plan is to do whatsapp messages that's what our plan is <clears throat> okay but before the whatsapp message i have to first install the whatsapp related library for the python that's what we have done this library <clears throat> give you a module okay module name could be anything in this case in our case module name is pi what kit by chance my library name is also same but it's not always the case library name may be different module name can be different <clears throat> okay and this module give a function who send the message right and function name is called send what's up message so a function that's for going to use <clears throat> so let me show you guys how we can send the whatsapp message so first i will import the library called pi what's kit okay why is this library important because we installed the library without library instruction this library uh, module won't import so we use this command you know we use this command to format so let me comment so this will install the library okay then we will load module okay and now this module will give a function okay so i say in this module dot tap multiple functions available okay which one you want to run okay so multi function available multiple requirement i want to run a function called send whatsapp images no send whatsapp to group no send whatsapp just message yes this function i want to run see guys exactly same i want to run system function here i want to run send whatsapp as well so module is always module this one module to first load module to first load only difference is this module already available by python built in python give to us and this module is not available in python you have to extra install it with the pip command or conda command you can use any of the command okay now how to send the message so this guy for sending the message you have to type the mobile number okay so here even though we let's like, check the syntax okay the say send the sending the message you have to first type your phone number then your message okay and here you have to tell two more thing when you want to send the message hour and minute okay that's also you have to type here fourth thing mainly you have to type here other things is by default already they set up for you <clears throat> so you have to first type your mobile number let's say my mobile number is 9 Plus nine one one two three four five six seven eight nine. It's wrong number, I know, but let me type pro mobile number. Then I have to type my message. Hello from hash thirty. Okay. Then what what time you want to send the message? Let's say my right uh, my time is eighteen thirty four. So I want to send the message eighteen hour thirty sixth minute. After two minutes, I want to send the message. That's all, guys. <clears throat> this statement, guys, will send the message. Only thing is, guys, obviously nobody can send the message directly. Then this program will connect your mob, your your uh, uh, desktop web app of your WhatsApp. You know, guys, this is the web app you have normally. So in your desktop browser, you also log in with the WhatsApp, right? <clears throat> so if you have to for sending this message. Okay, for sending this message, what you have to do, uh, you have to do, you have to first connect your WhatsApp to your browser. You know this one, web WhatsApp dot com. 
you know first connect this okay I'll connect this logging to this i believe everybody know this this you are to do the whatsapp from your browser then this you will work so this will use this app of the whatsapp to send the messages <coughs> okay this what uh, this code will do okay uh, so but let me run this code not from here let me copy this code this is a tested code and instead this i will run from here <coughs> okay and now only in the mobile number uh, i want to send because i want to send only to indian number the way i code get the code and indian number is stored in my mobile variable right now so this will i will replace with mobile variable so i have list of mobile number for loop will pick first mobile number okay pick second third and after they pick first my if going to check this is 99 no so this code won't run they pick 92 is 91 no 91 is 91 yes so this this uh, uh, if condition match at this point in time this is stored in a variable called mobile and this mobile i store here and this is the one who send the messages okay let me comment this line even though let me remove this line that's all <coughs> so at this mobile number this is our my team member number okay they, he will get receive the mail hello message hello from uh, nashadin um, at this point in time <coughs> okay that's what they will receive at this point in time okay but only condition is for this app you should have login with this one then only it work okay let me show you even though let me check the time right now 37 so let me at 38 click see it after 12 second whatsapp will open automatically and then send the messages so guys here now 30 12 second but new tab will open <coughs> okay and your message will be delivered to this mobile number so i just here open i let me close this i don't want to show <laughs> my whatsapp screen to anyone though this public online site but yeah if you see they they open my tab automatically uh, because i already log into whatsapp automate this mobile number open and this message tag automatically in the <clears throat> in the message box to send at this point in time so this is a one tool also that you can create you can create also one kind of scheduler tool so you create one one tool one program where you can set the time at this time i want to send this message to all the mobile number so here you don't have to write if so at this point in time they put in the loop and they keep on sending message to all the mobile number obviously limit will come from whatsapp you pass in those control if whatsapp might have some limit to send how many messages on a different point but this can be done so guys point here is not the whatsapp right i'm just by this example i am trying to explain you multiple concepts of conditions for loop library how to connect here and there so that was the actually whole plan okay So that's all, guys. I just want to conclude today's class. Uh, multiple things we have covered uh, today. Okay, multiple things we have covered today, and uh, from very basics. Tomorrow, guys, we'll go to next level. Okay, we'll cover functions, modules, then more concepts we have of basics concept, related concepts, and then one more some powerful unique concepts about Python like list comprehension and other kind of concepts also. Okay, that makes the Python more. and more powerful okay and um, so that you can use in the respective domain and the technologies so what i'm doing right now i'm opening uh, the chat if i can do in the one minute in the youtube so those who are connected on the youtube if i have the rights right now okay let me try to open live chat So guys, I'm up. I have. I'm opening the live chat to the YouTube live streaming. So those who are there in the YouTube live streaming, the live chat has been open. And those who are there in the hash trading portal, your comment is already open. Any query if you have, okay, you can post there. Me or my team will uh, will give you a proper reply as soon as possible. Let's say it is open already in the YouTube. If it's not visible. And if you there in the YouTube, okay, uh, chat option is not coming, so you can refresh your page, where wherever you guys are listening the live YouTube is streaming, you can refresh the page, you will get the 
live chat option and where you can type your query and I will help you to uh, answer this right otherwise that's all uh, guys from my side uh, tons of concept we have discussed and this concept Himans hi hello how are you you say hi so I got your message I think you guys <coughs> when I say great sir thank you Vinay very much okay uh, so that's all again guys tomorrow IST time Indian time uh, 2 o'clock we will continue and and uh, see some more basic powerful unique concepts about uh, about things right so thank you Vimay. yes uh, hers it won't send the message your whatsapp message skin will open message will display on the respective mobile number box send button you have to click it is extra for the security that is they given this option so they won't allow you to send directly even though there's one whatsapp api concept is there okay so with the help of api you can send it without clicking also but uh, in this case you do everything is done automatically you just click on send button to send the things uh, yes rashmi uh, tomorrow we are going to discuss about list comprehension in line generator you know all the things we're going to discuss tomorrow today my plan is to give you step by step those who are very very new in this area so they can understand the concept and programming idea also okay uh, so have you copied the pycode command to the code before importing like no no tanya you don't need to copy the pi what kit command i just type here just for your extra reference because this entire document will share with your code right uh, so I just type this command here otherwise you just import this you don't have to type the command and you don't have to run this also I just trying to show you the concept that's all typically you write this part. for testing you can run this command just for testing but to make my code more logical we have created this condition so it look more logical that something is doing uh, on after processing the data <coughs> Uh, yes, Shiva, if you're from BSc background, not uh, technical computer background, I think you by uh, the how I started this training has no prerequisite step by step explained to you. Uh, yeah, you can go for full stack development. It's also a very huge requirement in the market. Okay, even though we are also starting soon a full stack training uh, with Mern. Uh, so I think next to next week we are starting. So we can contact to our team, they will help you. Uh, how can you join full stack training by me but yeah full stack also the good choice to start your further career in this this world of computer science so one problem i'm having to install the pipeline in linux mint i use uh, i think this pip command will help you to install right if you have the pip command otherwise we can find extra software for the pip command for Linux Mint. First install that software that will give the pip command and then use the pip command to install the PyWatt kit. And that same idea you can use. Same idea you can use to send the uh, email, send the SMS. Try by yourself, right? Just try to see it, how can you uh, do the things, right? While coding for list and tuple, such an intentionally I didn't cover tuple today, okay? because I want to show you very powerful difference that is not access available in the market about the different between tuple and list. Tomorrow I will cover that part that you can see the difference uh, between tuple and the list. Okay. So guys, this entire diagram code, everything will be shared in WhatsApp. Uh, sorry, in the, in the Google drive and this link, well, we will share in your respective WhatsApp group. I believe everybody is a part of WhatsApp group. Otherwise, those who by chance miss and not the part of any whatsapp group uh, we have already shared guys you mail check your email from hash 13 or maybe from preeti linux world and the where we given you whatsapp group uh, to to join okay so further management communication would be from our side mostly in whatsapp group only so i highly recommend join the group there we will going to provide the entire document and the code and remaining for the process also and plus how to uh, do the attendance also right you do guys give the attendance also the process for this will be updated in the whatsapp group 
so uh, full stack development course rajesh is more it is like a more industrial level training or summer kind of training it, i think it goes 45 days around not exact you can ask my team they will give exact dates but around it goes 45 days always daily basis kind of thing right so no ramesh uh, they won't conflict if you only have python 3 you can install anaconda no other i'm going to show on anaconda they ask you the path do you understand the path or not so path is the one who decide do you want to override the older python or not okay so it depend upon you you want to conflict or you want to override they won't conflict i can say but which python you want to use by default that will be divided by your path mahar felt get it to you sir as you're doing mobile course and program training for your course so many learners you can't afford so much yes vimal uh, <laughs> your name is also vimal that's nice uh, uh, it is not the only training we did lot of training already in uh, past all also and also multiple huge plan for future right so yeah we'll do we'll keep on doing this okay so so that's all guys i want to conclude otherwise we have a lot of technical volunteers to help you uh, i've seen this uh, uh, lot of queries here more uh, some of the queries will be come in the upcoming classes it will be addressed there otherwise some basic query of instruction my team somehow will very quickly help you to to solve this this point right and that's all guys see you and uh, and i believe you enjoy first day even the first day but tons of things we have covered okay all the best bye take care see you bye